how you made this film, what this film is about, and maybe give our guests and our listeners, um, you know, why you were inspired to create this film and just what the whole thing is about. Well, in May uh, 2015, I uh, came to, you know, looking into this enclosed cosmology and the topic we're going to be discussing tonight. I mean, I'd always been, you know, for the last 20 years of my life, always looking into, you know, creation science and looking at exposing the lies of evolution. Um, so again, that was a big part of my journey. But uh, again, in what was it, April, May of 2015, you know, something changed. And while I did a lot of research and praying about it and really searching the scriptures, at, in August 2015 is when I launched Celebrate Truth on YouTube. And for a long time, I've been pretty outspoken on a lot of different topics. And I'd always been thinking like, oh, you know, one day I'd love to get out there and, and speak my mind on YouTube. And just nothing came around. But it was this topic. And God was just like, that's it. This is the time you're going on. And, you know, big things I'm going to do through you uh, and through this ministry. And to me, it's just an absolute humbling journey to, you know, go through this, to basically, you know, ask God for direction and all things. And while I started off really going right for, you know, flat earth, exposing, you know, the heliocentric Big Bang cosmology, um, there was something tugging on my heart that a lot of uh, people out there were having a hard time sharing uh, this topic. And how I explain it is, you know, this topic is the upper echelon of right out there. So if you're going to look on, say, conspiracy theories, if you look at JFK, most people are willing to kind of go, mm, yeah, there's something going on there. I mean, I think they just released files showing that there was some sort of conspiracy going on. So it was almost like a spectrum. And I'd always been kind of known as, you know, a conspiracy theorist, even though I was, you know, a born again Christian, I was always very skeptical. You know, I was always questioning the government and the way things are run. But again, even in those circles, there was kind of like this scale. And I always explained it as, you know, you go from GFK to 9-11. And for most of us, 9-11 was the big, you know, really pivotal point where we really woke up going, whoa, there's some big things going on in this world. So as Christian researchers, we started looking into the spiritual implications, what was really going on. And while most of the church I found really, you know, they believed in the devil, they believed in evil, but it was almost like, you know, the devil running around with a pitchfork and possessing people. And that was all he did. But no, he couldn't work with governments and no, he couldn't work with world leaders. So for me, a lot of my investigation was going in that direction. But then seeing the tie-in where scientism was actually being used by Satan to actually bring upon, you know, in my mind, the, the one world order, but also getting everyone kind of conditions and indoctrinated. So part of my journey was obviously, you know, putting out videos. Uh, I think I'm at 299 or 300 videos now. In two and a half years, I've put out 300 videos. I have, I think about eight documentaries. We'll be talking about Scientism Exposed 2, which was the sequel. But leading up to that, I had done like the global light check it out Rob Skiba's in it a few others but that was kind of my first real major even though I had put together compilation documentaries that was kind of my first one where I was doing Skype interviews and you know and I wanted to I've always been big into cinematography and and editing and directing and these type of things but I really wanted to like use this for his glory and for me it was this topic but again as anybody that is you know dealing with this topic bringing this up with loved ones or family members it can be very versatile. I mean, we're talking about some crazy reactions from, you know, throwing stuff. There was an incident that happened in Canada where there was a um, argument got so heated that uh, someone threw a propane tank into a fire and the police department and fire department had to come and it was over the shape of the earth. So this is a very heated topic. It, it brings a lot of different emotions out for many people. So the big thing was I wanted to approach it. I wanted to come up with something that really at the end, it would, it would start them on their journey. Maybe, you know, even at GFK, 9-11, moon landing, and then maybe getting into, well, if they didn't land on the moon, why would they lie? You know, and then getting into, you know, the shape of the earth. So for me, Scientism Exposed, which I released in November of 2016. Um, it was a huge success. It's all, it's still, you know, over nine out of 10 on the IMDB, which is the internet movie database over like 300 reviews. Phenomenal. I mean, I was floored actually, because again, it was kind of my first, you know, major piece of work that I released on DVD. I had released it on YouTube and DVD on the same day. I tried something a little different there. And again, the response was just overwhelming. People were buying multiple copies. They were buying it in bulk. They were putting it in libraries. They were giving it to churches. They were handing it out in high schools. It was phenomenal, but the topic itself, Flat Earth was never mentioned once 
um, by anyone in that documentary, yet it hinted at a lot of different things, right? Wait a minute, you know, maybe we're not moving. You know, these type of things. It really didn't get into the curvature so much as it got into, wait a minute, there's a lot of things that really, you know, aren't adding up. And it would start someone on that journey. And the whole purpose was to get people to, you know, start looking into something. If there was one thing that they looked at and they said, wait a minute, that's weird. I want to look into that. What? NASA? What? They've never been back. You know, they've only been so high in the last, you know, 50 years. Why haven't they been back to the moon? If it was one thing that got them questioning NASA, because I believe that, you know, and I still believe this, that the moon landing is critical. If you're talking to someone and they think you're crazy for bringing up, you know, flat earth, most likely they believe they landed on the moon. I have yet to find any flat earther that believes also in the moon landing. It's impossible, right? So what we're dealing with is that's kind of like the prerequisite in order to go into flat earth. So when I'm flying around and I was, you know, shooting scientism exposed to, I'd be on planes, I'd be, you know, renting cars and I, you know, they'd be asking, where are you going or what are you doing? Oh, I'm shooting a documentary. Well, what are you shooting it on? Scientism. What's scientism? And it was a great opening, you know, topic to explain the difference between science and scientism. So for me, coming out with scientism was really, really important. And then following up the work from Scientism Exposed, the first one, Scientism Exposed 2 would start getting you deeper into the subject matter. If you were already tracking with one, you were hungry for more. You wanted to see where this was going. Could there be more? And that's kind of where it's gone. And it was an amazing opportunity, uh, not only to shoot it and to, you know, bring it all together, but all also, in all in the years that I've got to know a lot of these people that are in the film, you know, whether it was in interviews on their shows, like Rob Skiba, I had been on his show many times. We had got to know each other really well, you know, uh, John Pounders uh, and other people, you know, but this was a great opportunity through all this experience, you know, whether it was at conferences, whether it was shooting the documentary, to finally meet and to really start bonding on that level. Because again, this project couldn't happen without these great people that we'll be talking about tonight, like Rob Skiba and Joe Taylor and Jared Crestman uh, and many, many people that were brought in. And again, it was interesting how it all came together because there was a few people you know, that were designated at the beginning, but God really brought a lot of people together at the last minute. And I mean, literally like in the last month, it was amazing how it all coordinated. It came together. It was only by Providence. It was incredible to see it happen. And like I said, I mean, this is all being directed by the hand of God. Well, let, let's go down that journey. You know, uh, first question I would have for you is how long did this film actually take you to, from start to finish, uh, take you to compile? Um, well, Scientism Exposed 2 uh, took about eight months. Um, and again, I'd probably be about the same for the first one. I mean, there's a lot of work putting together a documentary, as you'll know. And again, for me, you know, putting it together the first one, even the second one, I was kind of like, you know, wearing all the hats, right? Because obviously it's not a huge budget. You don't, you can't have huge crews and these sort of things. And, you know, especially for the first one. With the second one, I mean, I had a cameraman follow me around when I was traveling, which was cool. But with the first one and the second one, I mean, I did the DVD cover. I did all the DVD, you know, uh, anything to do with the actual film. It was like, you know, credit wise, there was so much stuff put in there. And again, there were great people that came to the project and assisted and helped out. That was the really interesting thing, though, bringing it all together, coordinating the flights and everything coming together. It was just absolutely incredible. And really, we'll be talking, you know, because I know that John Pounders and Jake are there out, uh, you know, in Texas and they've met, you know, a couple people, uh, obviously Rob Skiba, but also Joe Taylor and Aaron Judkins. And that was the first opportunity for me to ever meet them and also, you know, be really introduced to their work. I might have, you know, seen it here and there, but not really from a concentrated point of view. But again, it was amazing how, you know, they all said, you know, both watched Scientism Exposed. They said, yep, yeah, we'd love to be in it. And it was great because here was other people exposing other works of scientism, not necessarily tracking, you know, with the whole Earth is flat, but they're like, this is a good project to be involved with. And the discussion has opened up, just like I say with many people, having Scientism Exposed as a tool, whether it's on DVD or you're you know, sharing it or whatever, it really opens up the discussion because even people like this, that if you, you know, threw them a flat earth documentary, they'd be like, I'm not watching that. It's crazy. But it's like, hmm, scientism exposed. What's that? I mean, I'm, I'm exposing science. So again, it really helps, I think, with, you know, uh, Christian ministries, people that are already on the forefront. And again, I owe a big, uh, you know, amount of gratitude to, you know, people like Joe Taylor, Aaron Judkins, but also even ministries like Answers in Genesis and all these creation ministries, because while it's frustrating that they're still, you know, holding on to the helium centrism 
I mean, I was myself personally and five years ago, right? So again, we have to have patience. We need to pray for people. I, I say that a lot of people, uh, you know, respond in their time. Some people, you know, for example, after, you know, researching this for a few weeks, I'm like, oh, I got to go to my wife and tell her I think the earth is flat. Oh, you know how worried you are, right? And she literally accepted it in like not, not 15 seconds. She's like, if the Bible says it, then it's true. Some people have that amount of conviction, fortitude, faith. It's unbelievable. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I just said, I think the earth is flat. <laughs> She's like, the Bible says it. It's true. So I was I was ashamed. I was almost like, Lord, why? Why couldn't I have that amount of faith? You know, why did I just pass over these verses? You know, why couldn't I just believed it? Like having childlike faith. You know, if you read these verses to a child, they're like, yeah, they have a picture. They understand their world. Yet we kind of train them outside of that. And it's like shame on us, shame on the people that are doing this. But I think a lot of people, they're not going out their evil, you know, intentions. They honestly believe what they were taught. So I, I say to a lot of people, you know, people come down on a lot of people and say, oh, they're evil and they're working for Satan. I just think they're duped, like just like I was. I was I was quoting Isaiah 40, 22, saying, see, ball, globe, right? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Isaiah knew it was a globe before NASA. So I was using that verse. So I think a lot of people are kind of just going, they're parroting what they were said, what they were taught. And uh, to me, it's an important very, very important topic. I, I, I say this all the time, but I can't see a greater um, topic of importance because this topic affects every single human being on earth. If you actually think about it, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a Christian, a Buddhist, a Muslim, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a worldview shaped by scientism. So that's the really interesting thing here is that this deception shapes your entire worldview that's why I'm saying it is incredibly important because while all these other areas are incredibly important, they touch on things that need to be exposed, but do they actually affect every single person? No, they have their method, but this topic from an early age, I mean, my daughter is watching stuff, you know, and she's over two now, but I remember even at one, you'd throw on a program, even for babies, and they'd have like crazy, like uh, songs like Bad Bad Black Sheep, or, you know, I forget what the last one we were laughing at. It had nothing to do with space, yet they're flying around, going to planet to planet, meeting Martians. And I'm like, what does that even have to do with the song? So they're indoctrinating children from an early age. This is incredibly important. And it's an amazing, you know, uh, journey to be part of. And it was a lot of fun, you know, getting this together uh, in eight months. Well, for everybody listening that's new, can you explain the difference between science and scientism? Um, well, I would say that, uh, you know, science, and this is the one thing that a lot of people, you know, we get accused of this a lot, whether it's, uh, you know, you guys are, you know, retards or stupid because you believe the earth is flat or you're science deniers. And this is a way that the media and this is the way that, the, you know, it's been programmed in us to ridicule flat earth. We see the ships, you know, going over the edge and just crazy. That's why most people won't even give it the time of day because they have the images programmed. But understand that myself and anyone that I know that's even on the forefront that is putting out content that is really trying to expose the world's lies when it comes to scientism and NASA, we all think science is good. Science is doing tests, observing, repeating. These type of things are good. Scientism, however, is a religion. It is something that basically has been masqueraded underneath the veneer of science, but it's scientism, it's an agenda. Nothing can be proved, uh, whether it's whether it's evolution, whether it's the Big Bang. How, how do you do? How do you replicate the experiment with the Big Bang? You can't. You can't go back in time. You know they'll, they'll talk about you know dinosaurs living you know millions of years ago. They'll talk about the universe being billions of light years away. But yet you cannot absolutely experiment with that. You can't use the scientific method. So what I would say to start with is if you're going to believe in something and you want to hold on to science because so many people are holding on for dear life. Make sure it's science, because as I say in the opening film, Scientism Exposed, what if you found out your whole life you were holding on to something that you believed was science? Because like I agree, science is good. You know, science is something that we can hold on to and say this is a way to test and observe our world using our senses, using an empirical method. But what if there was a deception in that and you were holding on to this? But if you opened it up, you found that, wait a minute. It's not actually underneath the scientific method. Absolutely, this is the theories of men. And it goes further than that because this is a spiritual agenda. This is Satan's, you know, ideologies. This is Satan's agenda presented in this veneer of, of dignity. 
And again, you know, throughout time, there was always the, the seers, the wise men, uh, you know, all these type of things. And, and the Bible explains that the world's wisdom is foolishness to God. So if the world's foolish, uh, sorry, if the world's wisdom is absolute foolishness, ask yourself right now, and this is a good question to ask people, you know, that are really following the Bible, who are the wisest men of the world that we look at right now, even in the last 100 years, you know, it's the scientists, it's the nuclear physicists, it's the rocket scientists, right? We always talk about this, it's under the science, they are providing the answers for the world. That's the wisdom of the world, it's science, you know, so what I'm saying is it's been hijacked, Satan understood that, you know, he can have all these opposing belief systems, you know, whether it's Buddhism or New Age or Satanism or whatever. And everyone can can detect and understand that, you know, if I'm a Satanist, I'm in another religion than Christianity or I'm in another. But what if all of a sudden you could masquerade your agenda in something that was disguised, you know, and it wasn't presented as religion. It was presented as fact, reality. There's no debate. So to me, this is so incredibly important because he's been able to get away with so much of his agenda. And again, Scientism Exposed 2 explains all that, but also shows to, you know, well, why, number one, but also two, where is this heading us? Is he just lying to us because he's the father of all lies? Or is he preparing us? Is he preparing the world for the great deception? Does he have a plan? And does it make sense that he would need evolution? He would need the Big Bang. He would need a spinning ball flying through space. You need that to have evolution. You need that to de completely destroy a creator. Think about it. If you are on an enclosed world, if you're on a world that is positioned at the center and everything revolves around it, there's a creator. Everyone in this community, whether they're Christian or not, I mean, I can I can go through the list, you know, uh, Globusters, I could go through like Jaron or Bob or Mark Sargent or any of these, whether or not they're completely following the word of God and understanding the true creator of creation, they still say they're hiding God, they're hiding a creator. So in a split second, I've seen people go from atheists to believers in the sense that they're like, there's a creator. But one step further, I'm significant. I must be unique. Remember before we were dealing with a situation where we'd run into people and they'd be like, oh, I believe in a higher power. And you'd be like, okay, well, what's your higher power's name? Uh, what's your higher power like? Uh, what does your higher power like and dislike? They have no clue. They're just like, I believe in a higher power, you know? But here we're dealing with something where there's also some significance and dignity brought to the table where even people can recognize and going, whoa, wow, there was a lot of care put into this that everything would be created for us. So to me, this is such an incredible topic. I'm so passionate about it. I love speaking about it. I'm just so humbled that God is using me. Who am I? I mean, I'm not very smart. I'm not very talented. And yet God is using me to, you know, bring this topic and, you know, people's lives are changing. So it's just an absolute joyous um, experience for me in the last three years doing this. And I'm excited for what's coming next. <clears throat> it no, is becoming that, a go ahead michael go go for it okay um the uh, just just to comment on uh one thing that you had said about everyone discovers how important they are once they discover this truth and and the part that amazes me about it the most is that whether you're christian or no we are all made to be the center of god's universe i mean figur uh, figuratively and and physically we are literally the center of the universe. That puts a massive importance on all of us. And that completely destroys the, we are a speck on a speck, rotating around a speck. And that completely destroys that, that whole ideology that we're nothing and, and that we're insignificant. And I think that's the part that really grabs people when they grab onto this revelation. So, yeah. so yeah, I totally agree with you there. Yeah, and again, the deception is so, I mean, people that have studied Gnosticism, and again, for the record, because uh, I know in the chat, some people are saying that I support New Agers. No, I don't. What I'm saying is it's incredible that basically people that are affected by this scientific worldview that are waking up to the truth instantly come to recognize that there must be a creator different than just a force or a big spiritual, you know, there's a big spiritual soup going on, uh, you know, with all the religions in the world. But this one centers it in. And what I'm saying is I think that that uh, Yahweh, the true creator, 
And this is the interesting thing. When it comes to Gnosticism, you have Lucifer, you know, he's the light bearer. He's the illuminator. And he's always about basically saying, you know, Yahweh, you know, he was trying to give you rules. He was trying to restrict you. And I, I'm going to set you free. And it's interesting how the world twists it and looks at, you know, freedom and all these things as good where God was protecting us. And what I find in Gnosticism, and this is where it gets deep into the whole flat earth topic, is Gnosticism teach that he's the liberator. So follow me on this because I was praying about this the other day and it really came to me. And this is really blows this whole thing open. It's just like Lucifer to say, Yahweh, you know, he basically is telling you that he basically enclosed you, but I set you free. I put you on a ball flying. You can go wherever you are. You can ascend the stars, you know, don't be in that enclosed system. What I'm saying is he goes against anything that's protective, that's good for us and gives us an opposing worldview and a, an ideology of something of freedom. And there's nothing more free than flying around the heavens on a ball, <laughs> you know, especially if you're locked in and you're trapped, you know, and I don't mean trapped in a bad way, but what I'm saying is if we're an enclosed you know world the firmament that's all there is it's a beautiful thing because he looks down upon us he cares for us we're unique but it's just like lucifer to say no 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 you're flying around you can be free and you can blast off in rockets and launch cars into space oh look at elon musk doesn't he show you the truth so I bring that up because it's timely. I just put out a video, you know, a couple of videos, but just, uh, you know, yesterday I put actually this morning, I put out one and I mean, I think it's almost at 35,000 views and it's only been like, you know, 15 hours. A uh, lot of people are coming to this topic because, you know, sometimes we get some good things and the whole car launching into space has woke up a lot of people that would have thought we were crazy on any front saying that space is fake or that NASA, they're going, something's going on. I've had p friends reach out to me that are like, okay, you know, you've been talking a lot about this. I've been following your stuff. I'm not really tracking, but that whole Elon Musk, people believe there's a car, you know, flying to Mars, <laughs> you know, like this is insane. But again, people are waking up. So what I say is this is a great vehicle as a Christian. If you're Christian, you care about your loved ones and your friends, you know, tools like Scientism Exposed are awesome, but this topic is amazing. I've never seen a greater witnessing opportunity to tell people about the true creator of creation than this one topic. I have never seen more people when they wake up to the lies of NASA and scientism, when it comes to the shape of the earth, when it comes to everything with our cosmology, running to the Bible. Everyone, talk to anyone that's come to Flat Earth. At one point, they went out and bought a King James Bible, or at one point, they started studying, you know, all these scriptures. You know, and whether they believe in the Bible or not, they're like, I believe in those verses because that follows my senses and it follows my eyes. So again, I tell people, I say, it's not our job to change people. God will change people through his word. Beautiful thing is God's waking people up all over and they're coming to the Bible. They're listening to channels such as ours because they're interested in this topic. And one by one, it's not our words that we speak. It's his words that speak, that penetrate the heart. And that's what's the amazing thing. When we're following his lead, we're allowing him, obviously, just the Holy Spirit to convict people's lives through this topic. I've never seen anything greater. And I've always been passionate about evangelism, sharing the gospel. You know, I've been involved with all these sort of things, talking to over thousands of people. I was involved in prison ministry, street ministry. I've been involved in many things. I've always had such a desire and passion for sharing the truth of Jesus. But I've never seen a topic that basically wakes people up so much to saying, if this was a lie and I was deceived my whole life, I want to know the truth. And this is starting to show me the truth. And they run to it, you know, before they would mock and laugh at it. They're not anymore. And again, it takes people like us. It takes the timing to get people to come to it. And like me, I laughed at the Bible. I thought it was a complete joke before part of my journey, you know, was, you know, ridiculing all the Bible had to say because science proved it. I mean, how do you put all these animals on an ark? I mean, scientifically, I could prove that wrong. How do you explain, you know, six days of creation? I mean, scientifically, it's it's millions of years old, dear, you know. So, again, I was laughing at all this, too. So I relate. I sympathize. I empathize with people when they come at me, call me a moron, say that Bible, you know, that's stupid. And I just sit there and say, you know what? I'm just going to let God work. I'm going to let th these materials, these great resources resources, great, you know, content providers such as now CTV and you guys and all the people that are, you know, coming across this topic. And one by one, people are waking up. I had someone just the other day saying, you know, I've been there trolling you, you know, for the last two years on your channel, but he goes, I'm not trolling any longer. <laughs> so, you know, he was there nonstop, you know, and I just let it ride. And all of a sudden now he's like, 
it took two years, but now you know what? Something happened. And again, that guy is just you know devouring the the Word of God, the Bible now. Awesome. The part the the part that amazes me the most about this is that ever since I've been going to church since since I was a child, um, pastors have been praying for Lord, bring revival, bring revival, so the world can know who you truly are. This looks a lot like a revival to me because this truth is, is changing atheists overnight. I mean, literally, what pastor can say that? What pastor can say he can walk into a room full of atheists and say something about scripture that will actually cause them to get on their knees or at the very least realize, wait a minute, there is a God, okay? This, this truth has, has really bolstered our arsenal and given us the tools that we need to really go out there and evangelize in a way that we've never had before. So this looks to me like the revival they've been praying for for decades. Yeah, and that's the thing. And again, all the people that are in scientism exposed to, whether you know it's Rob Skiba or Jared Cressman or Joe Taylor, um, you know, or Zen Garcia, you got uh, Dean Odell, all these people, all different ways are, you know, something is sparking i mean they've been passionate they've been doing stuff but even like rob skiba was mentioning the other day that all of this kind of detour when it came to flat earth he was kind of trucking along all of a sudden boom it just hit him changed everything it's even affected how seed is going to happen and he's excited he's excited how the new shape of, of the project uh, seed is going to have based on enclosed cosmology i mean he is like back to the drawing board but but he's so excited because he says it opens up so many different areas. And again, when you get into like the Holy Spirit inspired, you know, extra biblical texts, Book of Enoch, Jasher, they take new meaning. And it was amazing. Even all the research, even before this topic, you know, and Rob and other ones looking into the Nephilim and all these sort of things. But what was interesting is, did we just not understand that Enoch talks more about cosmology than even the Nephilim? Like, if you actually look in the book of Enoch, it's got lots to do. I mean, it breaks down Genesis 6 real nice. You're like, whoa, that's amazing. But if you actually look at it, there is like, seriously, like, I don't know, five, six times more about cosmology in book of Enoch. So it's like, were we just all, like you said, a revival. And it's interesting because it's almost like, you know, there's stages. It's like Satan has his time. All he ha all he can do is make you believe the lie. He can't twist reality. He can basically tell you otherwise. So if you see something, he can be like, no, no, no. What you're seeing is different. Uh, I know it looks flat, but it's actually a ball. He can't change reality, but he can convince people with the lie. But all of a sudden revealing the lies when it came to evolution for a while, you know, at the beginning, if you follow uh, time, you'll see that a lot of people were ridiculing the whole evolution, but a lot of creation ministries is some amazing work exposing evolution with the church and with Christians. So it's like almost like we're in a next phase. And what I find interesting about this phase is I have never, ever been on one side fighting the war against Satan or scientism and had so many people backing me that don't even believe in the Bible. To me, it amazes me that I've got all this help now breaking down, you know, Dawkins and evolution and Big Bang cosmology. We've never had anyone on our side. It's always been, you know, the creation creationists versus evolutionists. Now we've got miles of people that are doing their own work and people say, yeah, but this guy is saying this and, and that's deception. But you have to understand that for me, I mean, when I first came to this topic, I looked at Eric Dubay. I looked at other people. It didn't mean I stayed there and I followed their spirituality. And I mean, Eric Dubay basically goes so far as he doesn't even believe that Jesus, the Messiah, even existed. But that's not to discredit the fact that got some knowledge from that and then moved on in their path. So I say, don't be so worried about, you know, what people are doing. God's doing a huge work in this. He's waking up people and they don't even know. You know, I, I say this, you guys don't even know sometimes that what you're doing, you're already working under his providence, in his design. And you don't even know it yet. You know, you could fight it, resist it, do whatever you think you do, but you're all being used for this great purpose. And I find it amazing because it's not just waking up, you know, the true believers, the remnant. He's waking up all these people. In a split second, they have to make a decision. Do I believe in this or do I not? And that's the tragic thing. I mean, we read the Bible. Many people will know the truth. They will still reject it. Again, that's there. But Romans is very clear. It is creation is the number one way that people know of the true God. It says it right there. It says it's the number one way that God reveals to the world. They know that there's a creator, right? So if you're Satan, what's the number one thing you're going to start to attack? 
creation. He has been at this for a very long time. Scientism Exposed brings it in on a 101 level. Actually, it's not even a 101 level. It's like Flat Earth 101 would be the global lie. Scientism Exposed doesn't mean you really get into the topic. It gets you into just questioning things, and then maybe you'll watch the global lie, or you'll watch Impossible, or you'll watch other things, other great you know pieces of work that other content creators have done. But this is the thing is we have different resources for different type of people. If you're dealing with someone that wouldn't give you the time of day, if you mention, you know, I don't think the earth is, uh, you know, a spinning ball flying through space, then get them something different. You know, get them looking into 9-11, you know, look into because maybe get them looking into Elon Musk and this car hoax, because I've seen so many comments of people going, you know, I was tracking with NASA and space and all that. Yeah, something's going on there. I'm just going to start to look into it. So then use that opportunity. Don't hit them with flat earth right away. Just ease them into it. So we got to be smart about this. It's almost like, you know, we're gentle as doves, but wise as serpents, you know, the scripture says. We've got to have that approach. I know it's frustrating. We want people to all believe the same thing. And that's kind of what the idea in my heart behind Scientism Exposed was. I wanted to gently bring people into this topic, whether it was evolution. You know, it was the first time exposing, you know, the lies of evolution great, then they can be on their journey like I was 15 years ago. It took me this long to come to enclosed cosmology and exposing the lies of scientism and um, you know NASA in this way. So again, if it took me that long, give people that time. But there's so many different areas we can go at. Scientism is such a big, broad subject. Um, I'll be touching on it you know, a little bit more in future projects. And I've done this on some videos, but it just doesn't stop there. You get into you know, climate change. This all ties in, you know, how, how the debate with climate change. You get into vaccinations. Science is coming to the rescue saying, nope, there's no debate, right? Understand that science is coming to the rescue with every single one of these things where this debate is supposed to be had, but they're saying the debate's over, right? Even into gender. Now they're going so far as to say, nope, scientists discovered there's uh, 50 genders. Now there's over 50 genders. They won't show you any chromosomes. They won't show you, you know, the, uh, the, the transsexual or the transgender gene. They'll just say scientists discovered. So understand that Satan is using science as the validator. You think what you want, but then science comes along and says, nope, there's no debate. You're crazy. You're a science denier. Oh, we don't want to be a science denier, right? So again, understanding that I'm a proud scientism denier. You know, I'm proud of it. And we all should be real proud scientism deniers. Let's start getting the, the, the people educated, understanding the difference between science and scientism. When they understand that, even from a small level, this conversation will really start opening up. I've had so many great conversations just getting into science versus scientism and not dealing with, you know, flat earth or, you know, that area. I just go slow and I get maybe into like, hey, is it interesting they're saying this? It could be anything. And again, you could start with climate change, vaccinations. It could be any, any entry point. Scientism, once they think science is hiding stuff with vaccinations and uh, autism, hmm. Maybe scientists are doing this over here. So it opens up the discussion. And again, that's what I wanted to do with Scientism Exposed 1, 2, uh, and the future projects that I work on. For sure. I think it's a, we mentioned it in our last show, it is a great apologetic of our time. And, and when we, as believers, if we don't view this as in defense of scripture, you know, we're viewing it all throughout the wrong lens. And that's the one thing that we did in our last show. We we really showed, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, our flat out insight show that me and Michael did, we showed this was not a new topic. This topic of flat enclosed cosmology, specifically geocentric, we, we honed in a lot on that as well. This is nothing new. This is, this is yes, this got a resurgence through YouTube and Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent. But this is nothing new. This is, as, as Michael always likes to point out, this is a work of, of Yahweh. This is the revealing, the, the bringing back, you know, for defense of the scripture. And that's why it's such a big part of our conference, uh, because it is it really does show the lies that were being forced and shows the proof and evidence of scripture. And that, that's really what's so important to, to us and I believe probably now you see TV and everybody and, and your works, Robbie, that is, you know, as long as we're keeping that as the defense, you know, because there's so many people out there doing some great work with with the Flat Earth. Um, and they're they're not going in defense of the scriptures. They're 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 going at it for who knows what reasons, um, not to say they're that's discrediting. 
but uh, you know, we have to look at it from that apologetic standpoint as, as believers moving forward. And I think we'll be on the right track and, and your films, Scientism one and Scientism two, um, really can put people right on that right track. And that, that's what I was, I got encouraged from watching both of those films. The great, well, the great I... part sorry, about you. Oh, okay. Sorry. The great part about your films, Robbie, is they're causing people to ask questions, whereas before there was no question. Okay. Um, so that's that's the beautiful part about it. And and once they start asking the questions, they find out when they start doing some research that this subject is about five thousand years old. Okay. It's not even five hundred years old the way it's said in Men in Black. It's about 5,000 years old because every culture believed in the truth of an enclosed cosmology. So, so the great thing about your movies is it causes people to ask questions. And none of us really never asked questions. We, we just accepted it for what it was. And that's the beautiful part about it. Everyone's doing their own research and finding the truth that way. Yeah, I mean, that was my, uh, that was my whole approach was, like I said, there was a lot of good content out there. But there was not something that could be used as a tool to get people, you know, eventually really into this topic in a soft way, in a gradual way, but really exposing the lies nonetheless of NASA and scientism just as much. When people hear the quotes, like it's not like we have to even convince people when they hear the quotes themselves. I mean, Elon Musk, you know, this is going to be like the scientism, you know, space joke quote of 2018. I'm telling you right now, but he basically says it looks so fake, you know, it has to be real. I mean, he literally says that and he's talking about that. So, and again, I just did a video on it, the video I just explained that's, uh, you know, going crazy right now that I put out this morning. But again, they're already in damage control. They're coming now and they're, you, ha you have to see the video or anyone, if you haven't seen the video, check out the damage control they're coming at to explain why the car looks so fake. I mean, it is, you can't write this stuff. But again, this is something that we can use as a tool because so many people are waking up. But when you have quotes, like in Scientism Exposed 2 and one that I put, you know, all together, these quotes sell themselves. They're like, what, really? They say that? Hmm, that's weird. And, you know, people go on their, you know, their journey. And this is really important. And it was great, just the communication, opening up the topic. You know, I was able to learn a lot from everyone that was involved in the film, you know, being able to meet Joe. You know, if you're not familiar with Joe Taylor's work, if he runs the, the uh, Mount Blanco Fossil Museum, absolutely incredible stuff. You know, I was able to spend quite a bit of time with Joe. Uh, Jared met up as well, Cressman, um, there, and he helped coordinate the, uh, the interview there with uh, Joe. Amazing stuff. And he, you know, Interesting enough, you know, talking about conferences, he actually came out to the first Flat Earth International Conference that I put on, you know, last year in November, and he came out to learn. He's like, I, I'm not saying I believe it. I just want to learn more. You know, there's something going on. So someone that basically, you know, is willing to investigate this topic, right? Even with Aaron Judkins, you know, getting into this stuff, all this, the years that he has spent, you know, breaking down the lies of scientism when it comes to evolution and dinosaurs and all this amazing stuff. And just being able to walk with him and see the process of excavation, excavation underneath limestone, you know, and there's always some people out there that say, oh, it's all fake. It's all fake. Okay. Yeah. There are some things that are fake. And trust me, I don't believe anything is, you know, millions of years old, but dinosaurs existed guys. When you're going under limestone, many, many layers, like just go out and look into it and you'll see it is impossible to fake. I mean, I am very critical. I looked at it myself. You can't fake it. Now, when, what, it, what happened, you know, in Glen Rose, Texas, what happened when they found a dinosaur track in the sediment? Oh, and a human footprint. Wait a minute. That's not good. Well, anyways, they all rushed in and they're like, no, 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 it can't be human. And they're like, yeah, but it, uh, it meets everything. And they're looking at it. And anyways, they took away with it and, you know, explained it away and it disappeared. What I'm saying is this is what's going on. Anything that comes against it. And Joe Taylor was able to bring in the whole um, exposing of giants. The Bible talks about giants, doesn't it? We all see it. Wait a minute. Could it be that science would hide it? If there were giants, we'd probably see some evidence of that around the earth, right? That's exactly what's happening. But yet they're, you know, that's disappearing in the Smithsonian Museum and different things. Look into that. So again, scientism is so much bigger than just enclosed cosmology, but it's the mother load. When you get to that, it's like the umbrella I say that everything fits under. You can't get a greater deception than, than the, the globe Earth. 
you try and figure out anything bigger than the Big Bang heliocentric, you know, explosion. There's nothing bigger. What I'm saying is everything that was formed under it is that umbrella. So we're dealing with the mega monster lie. And that's why I'm saying that there's such spiritual attack with this discussion, why it's so hard and it may take years for people to come. They have been programmed and indoctrinated, even as Christians. You just takes a while to come out of that because it's just like a hard shell. This is the umbrella. I really believe it. I have not found anyone that can say, I believe this is a greater lie than this lie, you know, if they believe in it. Because they're like, hmm, what could be bigger than this? There is nothing bigger than this. I'm not saying this is the great deception. I'm saying that having this worldview makes it a lot easier to believe the great deception that's coming. So I never say that, look, if you don't believe in flat earth, you're going to be deceived. And, you know, I think that's dangerous talk when we make this salvational, when we say to our brothers and sisters, we say, you know, oh, you're a sun worshiper. And it's just negative talk. We have to approach it prayerfully. We have to understand it in a different context because let's not make this salvational. It's important. Yes, it is the mother load. And for whatever reason, you know, like you said, a revival, God's chose to wake up certain people right now and they're leading the charge. They're on the forefront. Many people are going to come after them, but it's all in his timing. So we can't, we don't have the power to rush someone along. That allow the Holy Spirit to work on that person, you know. But again, you have that voice, you know, in God's timing to basically make that change. And I just say that's this that's so important when it comes to this discussion is let's basically pray that we're used in a capacity and we focus our time and energy on people that really are drawn to us rather than expending all this energy where people laugh and mock us. Don't spend your time like that. Spend it on someone that's like, tell me more. I've never seen the Bible. What 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 page should what what book should I read? What's an Old Testament? What's a New Testament? Talk to these people that it's just like their whole world opens up. They're out there. Don't focus your energy. It's like you know, uh, throwing your uh, pearls to swine. You know, this is important when we're talking and we're passionate about this topic because we can exert all of our energy. We need to be filled up. We need to understand that there's certain people that it's it's wise. It's wise counsel to allow God to basically say, this is the person I'm directing to you right now, you know, and don't try to, you know, focus too much time on it all. Now, I'm not saying it's it's bad to just tell people about flat earth, but understand that people that are close to you and family and friends, look at the long approach because you probably have a little bit longer to work with them. You might not know this person online and you can choose to do whatever you want. I just think it's better. It's worked out well with me and people that I talk to, because I get a lot of questions like, how, how can I talk to my grandma? How can I talk to my mom? And because again, there's been a lot of negativity with this topic. So I think, um, you know, we just keep going forward. I tell, I tell people this all the time, but I say it's going to be a rough road, but it's going to be really rewarding uh, in the end. But this is not going to be easy. It's not like, oh, yeah, you know, in two months, everything's going to be great and everyone's going to be singing. It's going to be rough, man. And I say for the first five years, this thing is going to be tough. I mean, it, it's uh, only in God's strength are you going to survive. It's going to take out a lot of people. I've seen people drop out already. And again, this is this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a topic. We're dealing with the umbrella, the mother load of lies. Lucifer does not want Many people, he's already devising ways to take out anybody that's basically, you know, passionate, speaking the truth. But again, greater is he that's in us than he who is in the world. So we're fine. So a great question that I would have for you is, do you, what is your hope with this film? What, what is your big hope for the church you know, all these people that are out there, um, you know, is this is this a film that you want, you know, Scientism Exposed 1, it's online for free. With with 2, um, is there DVD sales? Um, is this something that we should be looking to pass out to people? What's your, what's your vision to get this into the hands of as, as many people as possible? Well, like I said, Scientism Exposed, obviously it's available um, on YouTube. You can watch that. As far as Scientism Exposed 2, I have that on Vimeo. You can rent it. You can download it. It's available on Now You See TV. So you can watch both films. You know, if you go to Now You See TV, uh, you're part of their subscription. I think it's to Roku and other other platforms. It, it's an awesome service. You know, sign up. If you're already a member, you already got access. You can watch it. So I'm, I'm devising many ways to do it, but I'm also looking at it different. And I'm not saying, you know, it will never be on YouTube. YouTube. What I'm saying is I was deciding to do things a little different because, again, there was different directions. It's not I didn't want to give it out for free. Um, I believe that obviously this is important to get the truth out there. And it is. I mean, people you know, are supporting it. We have bulk orders. I mean, as low as five dollars a DVD. I mean, you could grab a bunch and just pass them out. Honestly, if it affects one person, it's an amazing thing. So 
made sure that made it available in many different ways. But if you haven't even seen Scientism Exposed, watch that first. And again, if you're even dealing with someone that you want to get this out to, this resource, you know, obviously start with one, right? You can get pick up a DVD if they're that type of person. There's a lot of people that won't watch a YouTube video, you know? So maybe an older generation, someone, you have it on their coffee table. It could be a great tool. I mean, watch it first, obviously. And if you really believe in it, then buy it. But that's the whole idea is you could watch it. Obviously, two just carries on. So my feeling was if you really enjoyed this, you're really going to want to go with that next step and kind of see where this, uh, you know, concludes. And obviously with Dean Odell and Rob Skiba and uh, Zen Garcia and Jared uh, Cressman, and it's, it's profound how everyone, even with the questions, all had the same idea how this was all shaped. And you brought up a, um, a point before saying there's a lot of people that are talking and exposing and they're not necessarily, you know, following scripture. You asked me also kind of what, I really want for these projects for you know the work on celebrate truth on youtube and what i do and honestly i really want you know obviously in a gospel sense i want people to realize the true creator of creation i want people to understand uh, the truth from lies john 14 6 understand i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me all truth is found in one right i want people to understand that it's so incredibly important but when it comes to the church when it comes to christians when it comes to that this is not about the shape of the earth for me anymore. This is about, do we really believe what the Bible says? Are we going to take it at face value? Are we going to start, you know, oh, that's allegory. Oh, that's poetry. Are we going to make excuses? Are we just going to stand on the word of God? That's what it says. Why can't we believe it? You know, oh, I can't believe in that because I don't understand pillars. Wait a minute. Don't disregard something because you can't understand pillars. Most times you can't understand pillars because you're thinking of a ball flying through space. What if? What if the ball flying through space is wrong? Hypothetically, I tell people just as an experiment, spend a weekend and just kind of play it and just see what happens. What I find intriguing is when you take every single creation verse, literal, anything to do with the sun, moon, and stars, earth, anything, the firmament, if you take all of them together, they don't conflict. You can't find one that doesn't fit. It all fits together in a perfect enclosed you know, cosmology construct, right? Whether you understand it fully, it all pieces together. It makes things like Noah's flood make sense. It makes things like the Tower of Babel make more sense, right? Because these are the things that most Christians are kind of like, okay, you know, you're on a ball, you're in a galaxy of billions of galaxies, and you're building this tower. Why would that be concerning at all? You know, why would that be like, oh, we really got to go down? And, you know, they're building a tower to heaven. You know, that doesn't even make any sense. But again, what if we're in a closed cosmology and the idea that they were primitive back then and they were a bunch of Neanderthals, that's another lie of evolution. And Satan has used that to give us the idea that we're so much enlightened, we're so much educated. These guys are ignorant shepherds. But the reality is when you really start looking into this topic, there was amazing technology going on before. And if anything, there was they were a lot smarter back then than we are today. Oh, sure, we got technology and robots and AI, all that kind of stuff. It's making us stupider. It's not making us smarter. And the technology, I think in ways, we're just catching up to the technology that existed back then. Again, this is something to look into, but it's just like Lucifer to present, wow, what a great way to disregard the Bible and anything in the past by saying, in evolution, we've evolved and we've got smarter. And we've, you know, again, scientism, it comes along and validates and teaches us what to believe on everything, whether it's what to put in our kids' bodies, what is to watch on TV, whether it's if we should decide if we're a woman or a man, uh, you know, tomorrow. You know, this is ridiculous, but yet science is coming along and saying, nope. And unbelievable in that video that I was explaining to you before, maybe I'm going to have a lot of great content for Scientism Exposed 3, uh, just with what's coming out lately with Elon Musk and the car. But again, they're coming along and they're not coming back scientifically. They're just saying, look, we proved it because look, the car, look, we proved it because we've got video and photos and we got astronauts in space. I'm sorry, but if science is coming to the table to try to, you know, combat, you know, all of this unrest, you know, people trying to, you know, look into the lives of scientism and the best they have is ships go over the horizon and they say, we've got video and we've got astronauts, something's up. And furthermore, if the wisest men of the world and the spokespeople for all things science, think about it. Science is like the authoritative, you know, validator of all things evil, right? But who are the two big dudes that come out when anything happens in science? And we're going to probably hear it this year too with the, oh, you know, the, the car with Elon Musk being fake or evolution or who doesn't believe in dinosaurs, li you know, lived millions of years ago. You got Neil deGrasse Tyson and you got Bill Nye, the science guy. First of all, Bill Nye, the science guy, isn't even a scientist. He's an actor, okay? We got a big red flag there. Then we got Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
wait a minute, these are the wisest of the world? These are the spokespeople for science? Like, step back and just honestly think about that. We don't have someone dignified, you know, really getting into applied science and getting into the empirical method and showing us dropping mics on stage using, you know, um, you know, swear words. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. This is how brainwashed and how desensitized and how indoctrinated people are. They will put up with that, you know. But even Bill Nye went a little far with his Netflix special, Bill Nye Saves the World. It got so bad that even people in the own community were starting to say, wait a minute, whoa. So I think there's going to be things like, you know, SpaceX, you know, recently with the launching the car into space, Bill Nye doing that show, Bill Nye Saves the World. There's a, there's, there's a few times where it's almost like they get a little cocky. And they step a little far where then more people wake up. And that's where we can have these resources. That's where we can have the resources to basically show them that there is definitely lies and there's definitely a truth and truth will set them free. The parts that's, that's, that's coming about the whole scientism subject is they, they have taught us a, a silent mantra. And basically what they're saying is don't believe in what you see believe in what we say. So in that way to keep us ignorant. So the boat's going over the horizon. And when we actually do the research, we notice that it's just point of view. It's just a vanishing point. But then they tell us, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not what it is at all. You, if you don't believe in what we say, then you're a fool and you're an idiot. So they're using that, they're using peer pressure to shut us up. And once people learn that scientism actually is a religion with no foundation in truth, then that's going to give, or actually it's giving NASA and, and the other powers that be a, a real run for their money. And, and they're running crazy. The whole thing with, with Elon Musk is, is amazing. One of the things that, that, that Musk said that, that really surprised me was he said, um, what, what was it? The reason why the car's colors were so rich was because there was no atmospheric occlusion? Correct. Well, Correct. that confused me because, first of all, I've never heard of atmospheric occlusion. And I have to deal with real world physics, physics a lot in my field. So I have to mimic water dynamics and, and airflow and, and, and gravitational forces. Unfortunately, that's what they call it in, in, in the software. So, but then, that then it occurred to me, occlusion, wait a minute. In my field, there's a phrase called, well, there's a technique of rendering called um, ambient occlusion. And when you're using that technique, it, it, it creates realistic light on whatever model you, you, you're you animating. And it gives it a realistic look. So it's really interesting that he actually used a 3D animation term to describe what he's doing, and and he used it within the description of, oh, it looks fake, so it must be real. So he was actually using a virtual reality term in order to describe that. Now, most people aren't going to see that, but they really are mocking us. I mean, Russian Vegas is right. They really are mocking us, and they're actually using terminology of, of a virtual reality field in order to do it. Yeah, he actually also admitted in that press conference that uh, they've got way better CGI. I mean, if they were going right. to fake it, I mean, we've got way. So the idea that he knows they have CGI, they've got really good, you know, so he was even looking at it, which which brings up the question, could Elon Musk even be surprised at what he's seeing? Could he be a puppet so much that he's kind of taken back? The stuff that he said comes off really strange. I mean, you got your first press conference. And of all things, you're going to say, whoa, like it looks so fake. You know, it's got to be real because that looks fake. You would never say that. You, you would be it's like it's like landing on the moon. And, um, you know, you come back and you go, whoa, man, it looks so fake. You know, I, I had to land it on the moon because it was so fake. I mean, no one would say that in the right mind. So I find it funny. Again, I'm just speculating. You know, I always look at it, but it's like, could he be a puppet where all of a sudden, you know, his handlers, you know, obviously he's the CEO, he's running it. But does, you know, as a CEO, do you know every any workings? I mean, if you're a CEO of Ford, do you even understand how the computer chips are, you know, you know, put into the car? You know, so what I'm saying is, does he really even understand it? And I mean, you know, 
Elon Musk, which which is which is interesting. He's all in the space. You'd think that he'd want to go up in space, right? He hasn't even gone up. But what I'm saying is, could it be that he's just running the operation? He's just, you know, things are happening. He's seeing it on the screen and oh yeah well, congratulations that's great i did it i mean for me i look at it as a big marketing uh, ploy i mean it's a great way to sell a lot of cars i mean i'm driving around the car that was in space like you know star money because it's called Starman. and yet i joked around on my video uh, on celebrate truth and i think that's why you know a lot of people are uh, responding to it is it's like you know he's disappointed you know that's star man and he's not seeing any stars he's up there and he's driving around you know it's it's, it's kind of funny i add a lot of humor when i see these things you, i say even though it's a serious topic we have to laugh at it and sometimes is because the topic brings you down because there's so much deception in the world you've got to have fun and you got to laugh at some things and i've done this even with people's a technique where you just start laughing and you get them laughing too and they're like yeah that looks kind of ridiculous and that can give you a way of maybe starting to talk to them a little bit more because any which way you talk to people you know as a, a way to bring the gospel is amazing. Understand that that flat earth or scientism or exposing the world's lies, I mean, that's all a means to the end. That's not the end. You know, that's a means to the end. We're all leading people to the truth because it doesn't matter if you think the car is fake or you think anything in this world, if you're not saved, if you don't have the saving knowledge, you're, you're in big trouble. You're big trouble, right? So, you know, us caring and loving for people, we have to be concerned, but we have to be, you know, not beating people over the head with it, but showing them that we generally do care. You know, we're not trying to like proselytize them and stuff, but it's like, man, man, if you don't get right, you know, you're in big trouble. That's just the reality. It's not, don't be mad at me. It's what he said, you know? He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So I just say, Examine him, examine Jesus, examine Yeshua, understand that this is important because if he is true to what he said, if he is truly the Messiah, if he truly is the Son of God, that everything he says is important. You know, and I always tell people, look, you can't just say he's a good teacher or he's, you know, again, C.S. Lewis quoted this and I've used it so many times and it's so important and it's really woke up a lot of people, but either Jesus is a lunatic. He's a liar or he's Lord. You can't have an in-between. He's a good teacher or he's, uh, you know, this or that. He literally said amazing things. You know, he claimed amazing things. So it's in those three categories. So I said, what happens if you really, really honestly and genuinely examine the life of Jesus? Do you come to the conclusion that he's a lunatic? Most people, I've never really heard many people say he's a lunatic, okay? You know, what I find interesting is most people, when they really look into it, they're like, yeah, I really kind of stand. You know, he was he, he preached good things. He loved people. And so, okay, then go a little deeper. He also claimed to be the son of God. He claimed that he's going to rise himself from the dead. He claimed that he's forgiving sins. He claimed to be, you know, be one with God. What I'm saying is if you understand that, if you come to the knowledge that he is who he said he is, man, listen to what he says. And what he says, and this is where this discussion is really important, Um and I say this because a lot of people can believe in a creator and a creator. And I will say the true creator of creation, but understand what scripture says. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God, right? And all things were created through him, by him. Jesus, Yeshua is the true creator of creation. That's what scripture says. That starts to turn people's heads. It's one thing when you start saying creator and God and, you know, yeah, you know, but when you say Yeshua, when you say Jesus is the creator, they're like, what, what? You know, the manger, you, the, the, the guy was on the cross. The Bible says he is. He's one with God. He All things were created by him, through him. This is the amazing thing with the, you know, getting into the Godhead. That's a deeper subject. But what I'm saying is that's where it will separate a lot of people is when we start saying, look, I'm standing on the word of God. And I'm standing on the fact that there is one true creator of creation. You know, you can't have, you know, thousands of creators of, you know, this enclosed cosmology and most flat earthers, whether they're even, you know, scripturally sound or even believing in the Bible so far still understand that. Yeah, it makes most sense that there probably be one, because if there is only one truth that we're not spitting, we're not flying through space. You can't have a postmodernistic thought where it's like, for me, I'm spinning and I'm flying. And for you, you're not. So both of us are correct. Right. This nonsense that we're dealing with in society now where it's like what's true is good for you and what's true is good for me. So if I believe this, you know, this is the idea. But what we have here is a ace in the hole because we have truthers and truthers want truth. They understand there can only be one truth. So let's hit home with that because there is only one way. There is only one creation. There is only one way that all creation was put together. There is only, you know, when it comes to eschatology, it's all found right in one book. That's what I find fascinating with this. And especially when you're dealing with people that are hungry for the truth, they're smart enough to understand that 
Either the moon landing happened or it didn't. It can't be like, to me, it happened, therefore it did. And for you, it didn't, so therefore it's good for you. And we're dealing with the new generation that are honestly believing this. They're like, I believe that when I die, I'm going to you know, eat cotton candy and I'm going to be in streets uh, you know, filled with uh, you know, whatever. And another person says, well, when I die, uh, this is going to happen. I'm going to reincarnate. And they're like, both are true. Whatever you believe, you know, you can achieve. And this is this new age thought. But what I'm saying is we can laugh at this. But when we're dealing with someone that's hungry for the truth, they're maybe aligning with 9-11. Maybe they looked into JFK. Maybe they're just, you know, maybe scripturally sound. They understand there's only one true way. So are you going to hold and pin everything on the scientists that lied to you about evolution? Are you going to hold on to everything when they're teaching you about the Big Bang cosmology? Because the Big Bang teaches there was a sun before an earth. Read the Bible. It says the earth was created before the sun, moon, and stars. How does that work? What do you orbit when all of a sudden there is no you know, sun's gravity? And you know, gravity, all these things are a construct to make this thing work. You only need gravity through a Big Bang heliocentric universe. You only need gravity when you're on a water ball flying through space. Look into all these things. Is it scientific or is it a theory? Because even if you get five scientists in a room and say, explain gravity, they'll have five different explanations. Look it up yourself. You can see it. It's never been tested. It's never been measured. You know, it doesn't even have a proper definition across different sciences. Yet it is the glue that holds this entire deception together. And understand that ball earth is bigger than just what does it matter if it's a ball or it's a pyramid or it's square you'll hear this a lot and i always say truth matters but trust me if you come to the knowledge um you know the reality of the creation you'll you'll come back on that statement and say oh yeah it does matter if we're on a ball or if we're in an enclosed world that he's looking down on us that he created everything for us and that we've valued we're protected and uh, we definitely have uh, a big, big uh, understanding of what's going on in the world. It really puts everything into perspective. You know what, I wanna go back to a point that you had made, and that's something I had never considered, that the beautiful thing about this truth is that it puts a lot of very old lies to death. It just crushes them. But one of, one of those lies is that truth is relative. And it, and it does destroy that, because you're, you, you're either living on the ball or it's flat. There's no middle ground here, and and that's that's a beautiful part of it. Um, because also, yeah, it completely destroys evolution. It completely destroys the Big Bang. You and another thing, I have never met a flat earther who is an atheist. Now, now exactly. maybe you guys have. I've never met an atheistic flat earther because you can't believe that all of this happened by chance if we're living in a snow globe. Okay, so. That's the beautiful thing about this. Yahweh has really pumped out this truth and have really put people up against the wall. Are you going to believe in my truth or not? All right. And and it's it's made life kind of hard for a lot of people because they can't comfortably believe in a lie any longer. And so that's that's the beautiful thing about this. Yeah, I had actually quoted that. I said, there's no atheist on flat earth. And it's totally true what you're bringing up, Michael. It is absolutely profound, but there is no atheist on flat earth. I mean, I would love to understand the reasoning behind that. And I mean, feel free, anyone contact me. If you believe 100% we're in an enclosed, you know, world, we're on a flat, you know, world where everything revolves around us and you're an atheist, I would love, I really would love to pick your brain and understand how you kind of bring that all together. Um, but again, there are no atheists on flat earth. And that's the reality. Scripture actually says there are no atheists. They choose to, you know, go the other way. They know they're basically taught, basically they would rather believe the lie. Like I said before, Satan can't distort reality. He can just say, oh, what you're seeing there, no, that's a mirage. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I definitely thought I was seeing those buildings. No, no, no. You're seeing a mirage. You know, what I'm saying is we can believe what we're hearing. It's the only power that Lucifer has is that we follow the lies of what he's telling us, but he can't distort what's true and what's reality. And that's the idea, you know, with Romans, is creation is reality. We can see. God gave us the senses that we can see. It takes indoctrination. It takes people teaching from an early age saying, no, 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 this is what it is. Children at that age can't even question, well, how does water, you know? And I mean, what parent can really explain it all? They're like, just, just, that's gravity holds it all together. Gravity is just like, a, it's like a band-aid that basically you don't have to go into a big, deep discussion about how trillions of tons of oceans stick to a spinning ball, yet butterflies can fly around. You know, it doesn't suck them down. But you just say, oh, it's gravity. 
it's gravity. So it's almost like they invented it and brought it up because, again, they knew that probably parents are going to have a real heck of a time explaining, well, if someone is on the top, then someone's on the bottom. Aren't they upside down? It's like, you know, the questions that children ask. But in, in all honesty, I'm not a scientist. Just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you know, just listen to your teacher. And again, they have the globe in every classroom. But it's a serious topic. And people can laugh at it and say, of course, we're on a globe and these sort of things. But really, trust me, I laughed at this too. And most people that started looking into this topic thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard of. You know, a couple of times I glanced at things. I'm like, wow, there is seriously people that believe that? What a bunch of morons. I mean, I've heard all conspiracies. I'm an open conspiratorial guy. I'll look into lizard man to run the world. But I wouldn't even look into that. So what I'm saying is the upper echelon. We have to understand that we have to be careful. It's almost like you know throwing pearls before swine. We have to understand the minute we utter that, these are huge words, huge implications. Be careful because it has damaging effect. Not saying don't say it, but understand that we're dealing with probably the greatest thing you could say to someone. I mean, well, what did you just say? You don't believe that we're on a globe? Of course we're on a globe. So, you know, we have to understand really the magnitude of this topic, but really getting into scientism and explaining it and following that track and getting into, again, like I said, the moon landing, let's hit NASA. Let's hit that because if people will start even looking in to, well, maybe they didn't land on the moon. If they even crack that foundation, they're going to be open to it because they're going to say, well, why would they lie? That's the biggest question I had for years and years, even being a conspiracy theorist, even believing, you know, they didn't land on the moon um, was, well, they ended the Cold War with Russia. It still didn't make sense. Why would you go to that much trouble even that many times? It didn't make sense, but it does make sense if you need to pound in the fact, secure it, the debate's over. We're on a globe. And again, we're still dealing with this. Have you seen the latest images with Elon Musk with that car? Look at that globe. You know, it's not even spinning. It's ridiculous. And here's the interesting thing. In the video I just did on Celebrate Truth, watch it, you guys. You're going to laugh so hard. They actually go so far as saying, can you believe that flat earthers deny the scientific evidence that the earth is a is a oval? So I said, interesting. We've heard pear. We've heard oblate spheroid. You know, we have, you know, the globe sphere. But we have a new one, guys. Go look for it yourself. I actually basically have the, the article in there and I have a screenshot in case they change it. But they said oval. I went and looked in the video and you'll see me laughing. I go in the video, it's egg-shaped. So now the earth is egg-shaped. Yeah, it's egg-shaped, guys. So so what I'm saying is let's have some fun with this. Let's show people like they can't even make up their mind. I mean, how easy is it just to say it's a ball, it's a sphere. But now you got science, no, no, it's actually oblate. It's like they're showing us pictures. The scientists are telling us one thing. The Bible says something different. Who are you going to believe? Do you want to believe Neil deGrasse Tyson? Do you want to believe photos? Or do you want to believe the Word of God? Because the Word of God does not have any spinning ball flying through space. Nowhere. You will not find it anywhere. And all these people that want to basically laugh, they're the ones that say all the Bible's allegory. So then, you know what? You can't even use Isaiah 40, 22 for your spinning ball, even though it doesn't even make sense, supporting that for a globe. I mean, I feel ashamed that I was saying that. You know, I had good intentions because I was trying to show that, you know, look, you know, the word of God is inspired. But again, when you really break it down, there is nothing in the Bible that supports a heliocentric big bang. It's geocentric. We're stationary. It is case closed. And all the evidence and all the people exposing this and all the people that are being woke up, like you had mentioned a revival, something is going on. But I go back to Romans. I think we're getting close to something because he's saying, you know what, whether you you turn to me or not, I'm now going to reveal it. I'm going to make it hard for you, harder and harder to deny. And if you still want to follow Satan, if you still want to follow the world's ways and you want to follow the wisdom of the world, go ahead. But when you get up, and you basically, you know, you'll have nothing to complain about because I'm revealing it to you. So I, I'm really prayerfully, I pray for everyone that's in uh, this topic, that's doing content creators, because again, they have more responsibility now because they're being shown more. And the more you get shown, the less excuse you're going to have why you rejected the truth. Excellent. You know, I'm just sitting back and thinking of, all the different groups that have come to me and said they've actually taken your film and watched it in small groups and that just hit me right at that moment when you when you were talking about that and and how funny that was kind of a as we've been talking about this just a soft launch into this topic so i think that's very important as we move forward uh, it's causing so much division out there and and it's really not division between us and the world because for believers We've been fighting them with this evolution creation battle for years. They've thinking we're crazy for all these times. However, now this debate, because we're questioning cosmology, as Rob Skiba likes to point out, nothing, all these other aspects of science have always been questioned. 
but cosmology always got the pass. And so maybe if you guys can maybe spend a little time discussing and talking about the division that's occurring, you know, small groups are being broken up, um, you know, Sabbath groups are being broken up, people are being forced to leave their churches, uh, pastors are saying, don't talk about this here, don't do this, don't do that. Maybe if you guys can talk a little bit about that division that's going on and maybe some insight on what can we do to soften that blow a little bit more in detail. If Michael wants to go forward, he can go first if he wants. Okay. One of the things that I've discovered is that churches have a lot of trouble coming to this truth because it is the ultimate boat rocker. Uh, they have everything going nice and smooth, and then you throw this ma massive theological wrench into the works. Um, one of the things I try to do is to help who, whomever I speak to um, try, try to help them see the truth by just giving a little bit of information or asking a couple of questions. Like, for instance, I asked a, a, a one brother in church, okay, have you ever read anything about the ever expanding infinite cosmos in the word? Okay, have you ever read about millions and trillions of suns and, and other worlds other than earth? Now, the question, or the answer of course has to be no. So then that causes questions in their head and they have to go back and research that. But even if they don't research it, it, it nags them. It really gets on their nerves. And so, and so I think what we need to do to help the churches, because the harvest is massive right, right now. There are so many people coming to this truth, but the new age movement is catching them up. And so the church has to come in there and evangelize this harvest. And they're dropping the ball. And so one thing that we can do to help them is to guide them in to understand scripture. This is the gospel of our Lord. And once they realize this is scripture, they're going to have to break down it. And then they'll find out, hey, wait a minute, this is an extra tool I can use for evangelism. Because there's they're working too hard. All right. Because once you bring up this truth, there are so many people that have come to the Lord just by hearing this truth. The churches are working too hard. And so if if we can tell them or show them somehow that this can actually make their job easier. That will help a lot, but it is definitely an uphill battle. They have a lot to lose, or at least they think they do. Your mute is on, Robbie. Oh, okay, got, I got it there. So was mine um, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I was just basically saying that I think if we dust off Satan's fingerprints uh, with scientism and space, I think this is a strategy that we can use because uh, once people are able to see uh, that signature, then they're going to start waking up and going, okay, you know, there it is. They're almost needing to see that right now in their mind. NASA is such a great, you know, agency. I mean, they could do no wrong. I mean, they're almost better than the government. I mean, most churches and most Christians, and I'm not, you know, stereotyping, but I'm saying the ones that are really loving space and NASA and stuff, again, they're, you know, looking to them as authorities, but they could do no wrong. And then you get into a little bit more dangerous territory when you're like, what about the Christian astronauts? You know, they say it's real. And I'm like, oh, brother. It's like, <laughs> so anybody that basically claims to be Christian or quotes a Bible verse, they have to be, you know, Satan couldn't use, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, anyways, it's a different discussion. But really, I think we need to use things like, for example, most of the church and a lot of Christians that, you know, are literalists when it comes to the Bible, they have no problem with Darwin. I mean, you could expose Darwin and they'd be tracking along. And that's what I did with Scientism Exposed. I did it in Scientism Exposed 1. I started off that way. And I also did it in Scientism Exposed 2 because I was trying to reach the church as well. I was trying to reach these people that were tracking along. Like, yeah, whoa, look at all those lies. Yeah, they just lie to us. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. All of a sudden, you move it over into cosmology, and they're like, whoa, I never really thought they could lie about that one thing. And if there was one thing, they're just like, yeah. And I have got so many people. And again, I look at this as always the gateway, but geocentrism. There's a lot of people that are like, I don't know if I'm a flat earther, but yeah, I think I'm a geocentric. <laughs> it's like 
that's a starting point. I mean, they're still holding on to that globe, but you have to understand that even if a person comes to geocentrism, I mean, that's a huge deal. Your entire solar system, everything it changes, right? So, I mean, even as a parent, if you were just a geocentric, you're going to be teaching your children completely different. You know, even though you got your ball still, you're still now aligning, you know, with the word of God. So what I'm saying is even if someone comes to that knowledge, that's a huge win. So rather than trying to convince them the earth is, is, is flat and it's not a ball, let's maybe just start with geocentrism. If we're going to get into cosmology, geocentric, um, that is a great, great starting point. You know, look at all the verses. You really think we're spinning? You know, it's like, so where's the scientific evidence to support the fact that we're spinning? Not using videos and astronauts. Scientifically, can we conclusively prove that we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour? Show me the experiment. You know, I'm willing. I'll get on a plane right now. I'll meet up with you. Let's do it because we'll be famous. The, the world time's over. Many people have tried to do it and they failed. I say this to people that are, you know, coming against me. I'm like, look, if you can conclusively prove that we're spinning, scientific, using the scientific method, you're going to be famous. You'll be famous. You'll probably be rich. So if your only agenda in life is to be filthy rich and, and powerful and famous, this is a way because you will be remembered in the history books because no one's been able to do it. So whether I try to motivate people that way, again, there's a lot of people that come with this topic, but they use NASA. They use astronauts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Science isn't about pictures and videos. I have never really seen a science textbook where it's like, and for this experiment, you'll watch a video and that's good enough. You know, biology, watch a video. You know, you actually do these type of things, especially when it comes to chemistry. Can you imagine a chemistry class where you never did an experiment ever? You just watched videos and you're just like, this is not scientific. So it's being passed off now and we're dealing with the generation that basically we just, you know, watch, watch media all the time. Media is where we get all our information. We're all guilty of this in ways. Um, but this is something that's important. So number one is dealing with the deceptions. But dealing with the deceptions is not on the, the globe right, right at the bat. Start with geocentrism. If you're going to move into cosmology, just start touching the topic. Just, just gradually say to yourself, I'm going to get to flat earth in six months from now. So I've got my work to do, but I can't mention it until six months. And then, you know, if you have this time, you'll find it's really interesting. You can really have a really good discussion when you get into geocentric Bible verses and don't even touch that because understand that most people are freaked out, me included. I, I'm open to anything and I almost lost my mind when it came to this topic. Okay. So Again, I'm an open-minded guy, and a lot of people that are in this, we already looked into the lies of the world, 9-11. We had looked into, you know, just all the evilness of the world, even uh, satanic ritual abuse and, you know, deep, dark stuff. We were already there. There's a lot of people that haven't even looked into it. They don't even understand that the government could be, like, you know, taking children and doing wicked, awful stuff with them. This is, you know, they don't want to know this stuff. So you're dealing with different type of personalities. we got to be smart about it. But understand, it's not a race. You know, I personally don't believe that the whole world is going to come to this knowledge next year. And I don't believe, I believe this is a, personally, you know, it's a generational plan. I mean, I'm going to instill these things in my children because they'll take up the mantle when dad's gone. You know, this is not something that we need to like, you know, tell people. It is, again, a means to the end. So if you have a choice and you're talking to someone, what's more important? They understand, you know, the truth about uh, scripture, about, you know, uh, Jesus, about Yeshua, this stuff, or about the shape of the earth. Shape of the earth doesn't matter. It matters what the word of God says. It matters if you're aligned with that and you have the right relationship. So understand it's about priorities, but again, it's important. I mean, for me, I mean, I spent, you know, three years, you know, my ministry doing all of this stuff. Again, it's important, but again, maybe in 10 years, I'll be on some new topic. I tell people this all the time. I'll still believe it. I'll still be passionate about it, but maybe I'll, you know, I'll be shifted. This has happened a lot in my life where all of a sudden I've moved into an area. I got into spiritual warfare for a while. Then I got into, you know, Satanism, understanding that. I got into world religions. I got into creation science. I moved around. So right now I'm here. I'm going to do, you know, what, what uh, I'm called to do here. But in five years, I might be passionate about a new topic. I might still think this is passionate. So what I say is, while we might be passionate about it, we don't have to enforce everyone to have the same amount of passion for that. If they're doing good work, exposing the lies, you know, of other areas of scientism, don't hit them over the head so hard because that's where they're at right now. They might be over in cosmology in five years time, right? You know, but you might be over in some other area after that. We're all working together. Again, the idea is that we're all used for his glory, bring people to the saving knowledge. That's what I hold to with Celebrate Truth, with all of my work, but again, with scientism. And with the lies, you know, when it gets to cosmology, because it's so large and because there's so few exposing it, we're called, but we're also, and the last thing I want to mention is this, this is really important. We are, we are all called. We have been woken up for whatever reason. You know, this is part of the plan. 
Why me? I don't know. I don't deserve it. I, I I don't have the idea why it would happen, but there's a huge responsibility. There is a lot of people looking at us. And if we're going to represent the truth, if we're going to re represent the Bible and, you know, most importantly, Jesus, then people are watching us. We have to be careful the way that we approach this. And it's not for us to decide this is the tactics and how we're going to do it. We need to ask for his wisdom because people are going to watch that. And you'd say, you know, how do we talk to people? How do we do this? Honestly, we speak the truth in love. We have patience. We look at this under, you know, God's wisdom, not our own, because again, people are going to be watching us. And one by one, they would like nothing more as to see us fall or to be, you know, represented. And none of us are perfect. I understand that. And we all make mistakes. But the reality is, I mean, there's a lot of eyeballs on us. And we have to, you know, especially with the church and our fellow brothers and sisters, we got to approach this, you know, in, in ways that they're kind of like, huh. He's really, or she's not really bashing me over the head with it. They're, you know, being cool. Maybe I'll look into this. So sometimes when you're not hitting someone so hard, they'll be more receptive. So again, just kind of work with things, but understand this is a huge deal because when people wake up to the truth, they've been lied to about NASA, space, and scientism on a grand scale, their whole world is literally changed. One thing that I've discovered, um, Going back to uh, geocentricity, that's a great way to start people off into this truth. And another way that, that I've used is the moon. Everyone sees the moon, okay? It's easily observable, um, easily testable. And so I've actually used the truths that we flat earthers have learned about the moon because no one has learned in school, well, other than my wife and Chris's wife, um, have learned that the moon is its own light source. Now, of course, I did not learn that when I was going to school. You know, it's it's just a giant gray reflector, which is, it can't happen. But um, one thing that I've learned is using the moon actually helps people understand too. And what I do is I, 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 I don't just walk up to them and say, hey, the moon is its own light source. I ask them, okay, is the moon lit and so i lead them back to their education and then when they struggle with those answers i say really okay then then why is the moon a completely different type of light than the sun so i just lead them to the question nine times out of ten they give me the proper answer now it blows their mind but they give me the proper answer and that's another way of leading them into no that does not say that the earth is flat a lot of huge questions because if the moon is a light source that means it's a giant a light bulb how did they land on a light bulb okay so it, it it changes the whole cosmic dynamic that they've been taught all their lives so geocentricity and the moon is a great gateway into this truth yeah i agree i agree using using the moon getting into stars getting into other things don't focus on the earth it's almost like people, you know, it's, it's like people don't want to give up their ball. You, you try to take a, a ball away from a child, you know, they scream, they yell. And I say that in a way that basically that's our whole world. It, it's a security thing. It's very frightening to lose your entire, you know, worldview. It's everything you understand and know about what you're standing on when you're walking out, you're looking around. So understand that that's kind of a very you know, sacred area for a lot of people, um, deal with other things. If you want kind of an avenue, like you said, the moon is, is, is awesome. I've used that so many times, get into stars, get into just, yeah, get into everything except the earth, you know, look at that as moving in there eventually. But yeah, because I've had a lot of people start to question the moon. They're not necessarily believing the earth's flat or anything like that, but they're like, yeah, thumbs up. I think they're kind of, you know, not telling us the whole truth. Why don't we see the other side? And you know, why did they not land here, you know, on the moon? So even if they're believing in the moon landing, they're still starting to crack that foundation going yeah man it's been almost 50 years they haven't been back you know i say this all the time especially when i'm talking to feminists and stuff i'm like you guys you guys march about all sorts of things you need to storm nasa and demand for the first woman to walk on the moon it's been 50 years and they don't have a woman on the moon right and it's like seriously you actually just start reasoning with people and say look it's been 50 years you know they supposedly went a quarter of a million miles away to the moon and yet in the last 50 years they say they've only been around 400 miles. If you look up any space agency, they that's what they say. I don't even believe they've been that high. Most likely they haven't. But let's just give them that. That's still weird. Quarter of a million in the 1960s. And since then, with all the technology, they can only go 
around 400 miles, you know, and this is what they're saying. So when I was shooting Scientism Exposed 2, and this was the great thing, not only was it amazing putting it together and editing and all these sort of things, my journey meeting everyone and shooting all the footage, every opportunity, whether it was airports, whether it was renting cars, whether it was sitting beside people on the airplane every single time, you know, what are you doing? Shooting a documentary. Well, the minute you say that, people just want to know, well, what are you doing, right? great great you know opportunity and i was able to talk to so many people we were able to actually even talk to people on the street get their opinion the big eclipse remember in august uh, i was in texas uh, when uh, the big um uh you know eclipse was happening and again that was a great uh, thing that went on you know in america with the eclipse in august was that you know uh i think it was rich mr thrivens of i brought up the idea that the moon was casting a 70 mile shadow on the earth that was kind of tracing, you know, across the uh, United States. Well, think of this. How do you take a light source, grab a flashlight and grab a ball? Try to replicate, try to do it. The only way you could do it is be that close to the earth. Well, we know the, the moon, the, you know, or whatever is so far away. And what I'm saying is when you get into all these distances, grab a spotlight like the sun, shine it onto a ball and try to create a shadow that is actually smaller than the object itself. You can't replicate it. It's an impossibility. Yet we were led to believe that basically the, the shadow was being cast was 70 miles. Anything you have, an object shadow can be basically the same um, diameter or bigger, right? Go out and you'll see it, right? You can cast a shadow, it'll be the same size or bigger. You can make it bigger or the same size. You can't make something smaller. So. Basically, what that showed us, and even science had a problem. They came running out, and they didn't have explanations. It was actually really good. This is a great talking point. So what that said to us is they were lying to us about the moon's you know, diameter and circumference and all. They say it's like 3,000. It can't be anything bigger than 70 miles because the, the shadow itself was smaller. You know, so what I'm saying is that's the intriguing thing. The shadow on the earth was 70 miles, and yet we're told you know, you know, it should be so much bigger. So all these things... All these inconsistencies, there's so many people breaking down the laws, um, you know, of what they've been telling us for so long. And I tell people this all the time. This is not just a biblical thing where people are coming to it, you know, from a biblical point of view, a literal point of view. They're coming to it from a conspiratorial view, you know, being skeptical about, you know, what's being told in the world, whether it's 9-11, GFK, you know, moon landing. And they're also coming to it with a third way. Many people are not, you know, on the conspiracy or truthers. Many people aren't religious or, you know, anyway. They're scientific. They want the empirical scientific truth. There's a lot of people going out conducting experiments, including all the other groups. But what I find fascinating is that there's three major groups that are all coming to this from different fronts. And there's people out there that are just using the scientific method to once and for all try to figure out what we're on. And every single experiment that's being conducted is showing that we're stationary and that we're flat. There is no curvature at eight inches per mile squared. We're seeing things at 60, 70, 80 miles away, you know, with our optics. And yet on a ball, you know, at 80 miles away, it should be 1.4, I think 1.2 miles below the curvature of the earth. We should be able to see it. You know, you can't say, oh, well, light bends and it, it, it mirages. And this is just the way they explain these things. Use common sense. Use your senses. God didn't give us our senses to deceive us. He gave us to show us reality and truth. Use it. Believe in what, you know, you've been given in your God-given senses. You know, it's not even about your God-given talents here. It's about your senses. He gave us our eyes. He gave us our nose. He gave us our mouth. These things protect us. These things allow us to conduct our days to know the truth. And again, Romans talks about the true creation look up look at it it's the truth everything revolves around you we're stationary you know and everything else you know is moving just like it says in the bible just like it says with our senses it's so simplistic yet it goes over so many people's heads and we just need to be patient we need to be loving because honestly we're not going to be winning people over by calling them morons and idiots and stuff like this and globetards the way we're being treated and i think we need to be the better man we need to rise up we need to it's going to be tough we'll be spit on we'll be laughed at we'll be but again how was Christ dealt with, you know? And he says, they will hate you. They will mock you for my, my, you know, my name's sake. If we're standing on his name as the true creator of creation, we're going to be attacked. And this is a big one because we're now focusing the true creator of creation on creation. This has never happened before. You know, this has never, there's never been a time in history, I don't think, where they've, they've basically taken it and aimed it on the one umbrella lie. So we're focusing it right back up where this was like Satan's territory. He had this mapped out. And now we're pointing people to the truth, you know, of, of creation and the true creator. 
he's not happy, man, because if he's going to be exposed, he knows that if once you break that down, the, that umbrella, everything else, it's like it's like a house of cards. It's like dominoes. It just all fall. Like I said, there's no one that believes in flat earth or in closed cosmology that also believe in the moon landing. There's no one that believes in flat earth and in closed cosmology that believe 9-11 official report was real. You know, what I'm saying is, fine, you're going to see a very common denominator, and I'm just using a couple, but that whole dominoes, you know, I'm looking for a flat earther, and if you're a flat earther and you still believe in evolution, please contact me. I'd like to hear your reasoning on how you believe in evolution, but still believe in enclosed cosmology. See what I mean? It breaks it down. We're dealing with the umbrella lie. It's so exciting. It's so exciting to be on the forefront of this. It's tough, but like I said before, greater is he that's in us than he who is in the world. Let's rest in him. Let's look to him for all things, with uh, for strength, for knowledge, for wisdom. We will not win this thing resting on our own you know, uh, wisdom, resting on our own strength. We won't be able to do it. We just won't be able to do it. We need him in this war. After all, it's him that's revealing this all to everyone. That's awesome. Well... <sighs> 2017 was a huge year for you, a historic year, not just for you, but really for the for for the truth. Um, if you could spend some time, it, well, in our last episode that we did, I, I spent a lot of time on geocentric um, and geocentricity. Um, and if you didn't know, back in 2010, they held the first geocentric conference. It was a uh, a big conference that was only solely geocentric, and it was nothing but doctors, PhD, you know, college professors, head of astronomy. Almost everybody was an evangelical, you know, Christian. And, you know, we found that so fascinating because it went so under the radar. So, you know, as we mentioned, it, it is, it's a game changer just with geocentric. So maybe if you could spend some time talking a little bit about what you did in 2017 um, in, in organizing something that was fantastic and what is the plan for 2018 and maybe share a little bit about uh, the upcoming event. Yeah, that's another amazing thing. I mean, with my, my background and with my, you know, profession, I've been involved in like marketing, advertising, event planning, media, these type of things. But to, you know, for that all to come together, where all of a sudden, you know, God was going to use me to plan a historic event, the first Flat Earth International Conference and bringing, you know, different people together. Again, I tell people that it wasn't Celebrate Truth putting together the conference. It's a secular conference, you know, being brought together. And to me, it was just an extraordinary opportunity, uh, not just for all the presenters and everyone coming together. But again, this was something to also show people that, you know, this is this is going to a kind of a new level. It's one thing when you know you're just on YouTube and you're you know operating. People start to take notice a little bit more when you start you know whether it's a meetup, whether you know these things happen, or you get into the level of getting into a conference. Um, so I tell people all the time, it's not so much about you know any so much different in a conference, but the community is so important. When people be able to fellowship and meet and. It just becomes real. It's almost like, you know, in August when um, come down to your conference to take the world 2018, um, it will become real. We're talking right now. We see each other, but then we'll be able to like, you know, break bread. We'll be able to meet. We'll be able to fellowship. It's just at that point, you know, things change, right? It's just, you know me, I know you. And I'm not, I'm not discounting the internet, but what I'm saying is a lot of times when you, you know, doing these things, it's one thing. It's like, I don't know who this person is, you know, you know, but once you meet, things change. You know, you could be skeptical even on someone. There were a lot of people even in the community. There was a lot of infighting going on. And to me, it was almost like, you know, Rob Skiba says this all the time, but he's like, you've been almost called to be a peacemaker. I'm like, it's kind of funny. My whole life, I've never really been a peacemaker. But, you know, it seems like I'm transitioning to see something greater, like almost like a bigger picture and saying it's important to kind of see the big picture. And if anything, help you know, bring peace at least as the last option. You know, for example, I'll tell people if things are going on, like, have you even talked to them on the phone? Have you met them? You know, why don't you call them on the phone first before you put out that video or before you do this or before you do that? So I'll be talking to people all the time because there's so much stuff that happens on the internet where we just run at it. You know, we run with rumors, we run with gossip. It can be a very dangerous place. It can destroy people's uh, reputations and credibility in an instant. That's why it's important that people, you know, meet that, that know each other, you know, for example, I mean, I met John Pounders and Rob Skiba and like Rick Hummer and like all these people, they know me better than just this face on the internet or a guy that's doing these documentaries or so there were so many fronts that I thought were important. But again, you know, having the first Flat Earth International Conference, it was absolutely 
there's no words how incredible it was. Like, um, there's a lot of things that have happened in my life, but I can't really put into words how I felt. Like, I was talking to my wife and I was trying to explain, like, just what was going on. The people that were being moved, people that came to me and talked about how much they were impacted, you know, by, you know, a biblical presentation. You know, they were there. There was a lot, and there was a lot of Christians. I would say, you know, easily, you know, a 70 30 split you know, Christian to, to non-Christian, you know, uh, you know, as far as, as the uh, people that were in attendance, um, the topics that were covered, the community, so many different ways. And then going into, you know, 2018, we're doing it in Denver. We did the first year in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're doing Denver, Colorado this November 15th and 16th. If you go to fe2018.com, super easy, just fe2018.com. You'll see all the information there. The hotel actually is like 25% sold out. I mean, we're, we're in beginning of February and, you know, it's going to sell out fast. Tickets are selling incredibly well. Uh, we're expecting probably, you know, 12 to 1500 people. So it's going to go from, you know, five, 600 people to, you know, 1500. It's rapidly growing. Uh, and I tell people, I say, look, where you just come up out experience it first meet these people decide because there's a lot of people on the fence saying well i don't know i don't know if i want to be there because there's this person that i don't think is good or bad but there's there's something for everyone almost right and again it's not about just even the presentations it's about the community trust me there's a lot of people that are going to be there you're going to have a great time and um this topic we're really alone in this topic it, it, it could be a lonely world you know when you're constantly laughed at and spit on and mocked and called these names and it's just it's amazing to be part of something where you're just all together in one thing you know and you're all kind of talking and you're learning and i mean you know putting on conferences kind of what it does for the community it doesn't matter what topic it is it could be multiple topics this had never been done for this topic so again like i said why me i don't know Again, it's happened that way. I'm just, I'm running with it. I want to be a good represent, uh, representation. You know, I want to do things right. I want to do things professional. I want people to be proud of what they're part of. Uh, people, you know, have said all sorts of things. I'm attacked a lot, especially after the conference. They can think what they want. Most of the people that usually, you know, shout out the loudest never will even meet me in person. They'll never show up to a conference. So I always say, you know, why worry about these sort of things? Why do we worry so much about what happens when someone won't even look you eye to eye? And this is what's important. And all the infighting and gossip and different things that happen in any community, it, it, does, it, it could be this topic or any topic. Once you start doing that, it starts bringing down and it's important. We have to be together. We can't do this alone. I talked about, you know, relying on God's strength, on his wisdom, but we need, we need fellowship. We need accountability. We need our brothers and sisters in this. And, you know, if you don't get to know them, you don't get to meet them. It's so easily to be turned by a bunch of people. Hey, I, I heard this person did this. What? He's a shill. Really? I, I thought he was really good. Oh no. I saw a video and it did this. No proof, nothing, but instantly everyone just runs with it. You know, so dangerous. But once you at least meet someone, it's harder to do that to people. You know, you can, you can differ on things and we need to learn that we can, you know, uh, differ on topics but we still have unity, you know, in the truth. So I always say that, I emphasize that is important. And for people that really aren't, you know, that are coming along to the conference that are, don't believe in the Bible, that's fine. They're still sitting in sessions and they're hearing the word of God preached. Hey, that's fine by me. I mean, I'm honored uh, and humbled that I can be used in such a large capacity in a topic that, I mean, just the media coverage alone. And that media coverage, you know, even the last one with ABC Nightline, Rob Skiba was just like, he, he loved it. I'd love to see people other than the astronaut, but of course they're going to bring an astronaut into it. But when it just focused on the community, it was well done. It represented even the Bible well. It represented looking into the truth, looking into these topics. It was exactly what we're talking about tonight with Scientism Exposed. He, Rob, you know, ended that, that uh, interview by saying, don't listen to me, go do the research yourself. And this is what we need to say to people. Look, go research it. You know, don't, don't listen to what I'm saying. Don't, don't believe what I, you know. And for Christians, believe the word of God. We can emphasize that. So to me, with ABC Nightline, whether it was HBO, whether it was BBC, it didn't matter. Because if one person out of a thousand go, I want to look into that. It's one person at a time. So sure, a bunch of people could laugh at us and post nasty comments. But when you're getting into like mega million uh, audiences, like, you know, with HBO or ABC Nightline, these are huge, huge opportunities. And again, they're going to start looking around. All of a sudden they come across Now You See TV. Oh, there's a flat earth thing they did here, like your show, right? Or Rob, uh, you know, Skiba or my, my work or whoever. Again, 
God will direct them and there'll be good, there'll be bad resources out there. There's bad, you know, flat earth content out there, but we don't need to be threatened with it because again, we don't control where people go and we can't like censor people and shut things down and talk negative. We just need to have this content because people will eventually stumble across us if they're meant to. And again, it could change their life and it will change their life if they come to that saving knowledge and understand the true creator of creation and exactly the lies of the world. When that gets exposed is it, it's it, it blows people's minds and they're on to this amazing exciting journey of reading the bible for the first time in their life i mean i talked to so many people they're like where do i start and i'm like don't start with the new testament first read that and then you'll really understand the old testament but i always emphasize that personally because i find a lot of people that start with the old uh they get bogged down by the time they get to like deuteronomy or exodus you know they're going they're tracking along good with genesis exodus and all of a sudden they start tracking so i'm like polish off the new testament understand the messiah understand the reason why he came and then you'll understand all the foreshadowing, the laws. You know, you'll understand things more clearly. Again, that's just my method. That's my advice. I'm not saying it's it's the the right thing for everyone. I just say that. But I get so many people saying, "Where do I start?" You know, do I find a good church or who could I look to? And you know, giving good resources to people. And that's why I do on my YouTube channel. If you're not familiar, I have like Celebrate Truth live 24/7. I do flat Earth. Enclosed cosmology, biblical enclosed cosmology, 24-7. I mean, it's usually down maybe five minutes every three days. But literally all the time, you'll go there. And I represent all amazing people. And I'll definitely be adding your shows to it. Once you get more shows, uh, Chris and Michael, um, send me your videos so I can add it in there. It's a great way for people to, to get more information, learn about good people that, uh, that are reputable, trustworthy, and people that stand on the Word of God. So people can do whatever they want, you know, believing in flat earth. I'm just going to stand on the Bible and I'm going to basically direct people to great resources that they can give to people and that they can be edified and they can grow with uh, with this topic and just this amazing revelation. I don't know if you have anything on that, Michael. Sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I missed the first conference. I am totally depressed that I did, but uh, I, it just didn't work with, with my schedule at the time, but um, I followed it online and it was it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Um, so um, I'm, I'm hoping I can make the second one, but- uh, Yeah, well, you, you, have to, you have to try your best to come out because like I said, it yeah. is just- it is, there's no words for it. I've been to many conferences in my life and I'm not just saying this as a ploy, like sign up, come on. I'm just saying it is absolutely incredible because like I said, for all of us that have basically seen in close cosmology, whether it was, you know, in the last, you know, month, year, two years, it's relatively new. This is exciting. And, and to, to share this with people, you know, we're on the forefront of something, you know, so massive. I, I don't think people really realize sometimes how big this really is you know i even i even you know fail to recognize that and i have to be reminded sometimes but this is so incredibly big so understand you know in the history books or understand in the 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 linear timeline this is such a fraction. This is just the start. I mean, this is like the infancy stage. I mean, we've got growing, maturing to do, learning from one another. You know, none of us are perfect. We're all learning in this. And we need to have that community. We need to come together. We need that at least once a year. And especially with this topic. And again, great, even, even uh, conferences that uh, you're doing, Chris, bringing it in is such a smart thing to do because you've got all these different topics plus you bring that in it's a great thing to do you know because some people might be a little turned off from it but again it's important because you're showing a diversity and that's exactly what i want to do with the flat earth is have a diversity of peoples even ideas even models um will be represented there it's kind of like a freedom to talk about all these different things because it's so brand new we're all learning we might learn from one another again i stand you know if if it validates the bible if it lines up with the bible hey i'm i'm tracking with you you know if all of a sudden it's going away from the bible personally i'm not following that anymore i'm going to move on to this person but again this is what we need we need to learn from people because we can learn from the scientist that is doing the scientific experiments and validating what the bible says all along why can't we sit there and do work with that person? Sure, they're not a Christian or sure they're not a brother. We're not saying they are. We have our differences, but again, we need to have that love. We need to basically look at it that way. So many people are saying we shouldn't associate with anyone that's not Christian and flat earth and we shouldn't do this. 
it's understandable if you're putting on something that's Christian or you're doing a ministry and you're partnering up. But if you're interviewing someone or if you're doing these sort of things, to me, this is the direction I'm going to go. I get a lot of flack for it. But again, to me, I think it's important. And so far, having the witnessing opportunity, being able to have the opportunities, have the gospel, scientism exposed to was premiered at the conference. Now, I want to say this because I think it's so important as well. Just watching, you know, being able to do a movie premiere in front of that many people with all the media, <laughs> it was a surreal experience for me. It was cool because Rob Skiba was there, Joe Taylor was there, you know, Dean Odell was there. I mean, there were many people that for the first time, they were also seeing the film. But here was all these people whether they believe in the Bible or not, they were getting the gospel. Because if you've seen the sequel, it is a hardcore gospel message at the end. I mean, I don't know if it could have been any stronger, but it's strong, right? And I always like to leave that on because, again, that's what convicts my heart at the beginning. That's what convicts people is the gospel. And, again, I try to do that with a lot of my projects. Again, it works that way. But, oh, I'll tell you, just the opportunity, you know, to put on the conference to organize it. My wife was so amazing. I mean, really, just like you, Chris, and we, I mean, we should talk more because you and Liz, you know, doing all this, it's me and my wife. I mean, that's really what you saw there until I got there with like Rick Hummer and, and John Gabrielson. He helped out, you know, with, with being the director. Rick Hummer was amazing. I made him the MC because I've gotten to know these guys. Um, I had a couple of security, but really everything that you saw was me and my wife put we had zero people you know so i understand where you're at putting on the conference you can relate with me and we definitely should talk more because you and i can relate we're on these topics but i'll tell you it was it's such an amazing experience because personally in my professional career i've done a lot of different things i've done a, a marketing campaign where i did 50 cities in north america in five months but i'd never put on a conference it was always almost on that list i guess i was just in the back of my mind oh maybe i'll you know and to do this in a historic way and to do this a way that basically brings honor and glory, you know, to the most high was absolutely just beyond words. I mean, I was, it's just, again, I don't have words for it because I, I remember walking around, I went outside and I was just like, wow, like this is really happening. I mean, BBC was there and ABC and, you know, and afterwards I was like, oh, they're really going to do these hit pieces. And none of them really did. If you actually break down every single one, and there is like to date, I mean, German television, Australia did one. Uh, there's there's a lot, even in different languages. But if you look at the mainstream ones, overall, they just expose this topic to so many people. And again, people will say, well, you know, a lot of people laughed at it. But what about that one Bible literalist at home that's, that said, it goes, huh, firmament? Hmm. Wait a minute. Right? They're like, yeah, I never thought of that. The firm and away they go. So again, one person gets affected. Again, I was affected. And now look, you know, putting out documentaries, doing, uh, you know, the channel on YouTube and that, and putting on, you know, international uh, conferences. Who, who would have ever known? But again, it's one person. We don't know the ripple effect. We always value things based on, you know, quantity. We need to value and base things on quantity and it's, or sorry, on quality. And it's almost when it comes to that point that if one person's affected, what's that ripple effect? What are they going to do? You know, maybe they're going to go in this direction. They're going to create this. They're going to do this. It's going to be amazing when we're finally, you know, in heaven and we get to see exactly the seeds that were planted you know, that we never got to see because some people, you know, plant seeds, some people harvest, but it's going to be amazing to see exactly what that one video or that documentary or that one interview or what that did to that one person. What was that ripple effect? So I'm really excited about that. And it's for me, it's one person at a time. This is definitely changing people's lives and it's turning their world literally upside down and stationary and flat. <laughs> and uh, it does uh, impact us in a great way. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so let's uh, let's take a couple questions here before we we wrap up uh, tonight's show. So um, both of you guys can uh, answer this one. <clears throat> Femi asks, "How would you begin a conversation in order to try to educate a person who is an amateur astronomer?" Uh, she says, "A family member who trusts in his telescope." Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I, I would just start breaking down uh, the things that really you can't use under the uh, scientific method. So, for example, get him to or her whatever to look at uh, things that uh, he's even skeptical of, like uh, 
do you really know the distance? Can you conclusively prove the distance of that star? And maybe start getting the discussion in there and saying, okay, how can we, you know, um, prove that distance of that star? Show me the method. Like, call them on it, not in a negative way, not in a hostile way, but just start looking up good resources. So, for example, if you're dealing with an astronomer, you know, talk to a few people, look at some videos, but really start bringing up a couple questions that you know they don't have the answers for and say, okay, so that's basically, that's not scientific, it's a theory. And he'll be like, yeah, okay. So track first and find out how many things he admits are just theories. Uh, when you're getting into telescopes and what they people see, it's really hard to break them out of that. Um, one interesting note with uh, the Flat Earth International Conference was that uh, Dr. Danny Faulkner from Answers in Genesis attended. He came out and he's going to be coming out to Denver as well. Um, so there's another example. I mean, he probably wouldn't have joined a chat room online, but he came to the conference. He has been very critical. If you've ever seen any articles, you know, he's a, he's a uh, physicist and uh you know astronomer and he's done a lot of uh you know articles against flat earth well he came out to the flat earth conference i've actually spoke to him after it and uh, he will be in denver and uh, you know he's learning he's engaging with the audience and we're going to have a lot of fun because we are going to discuss things and we know that there's going to be some things that he's not going to be able to counter and i just want to get into that discussion i don't want to do it in a hostile way i want to do it in a way that this is an avenue can you imagine if all of a sudden all of answers in genesis audience watched a a debate a nice healthy good debate and saw you know a couple areas where he can't account for it, where he doesn't have the answers they're like well, maybe science isn't settled, you know, maybe I should just listen to someone with a degree after their name. These are important things. So we need to look at all these tools, talking to your astronomer friend, um, you know, just start bringing up, you know, you know, you didn't mention the astronomer friend, if he's a Christian or a literal, you know, if this is a person that doesn't even believe in the Bible, I mean, you have a whole different tactic, but if he does believe in the Bible, start showing him Bible verses and say, what do we do with this? What do we do with Joshua? You know, does the sun and, you know, it, it clearly says that they were commanded to stop the sun and the moon. So what do we do with Joshua 10? So again, I don't know if your astronomer friend is, uh, you know, a believer or not, but uh, that's kind of my advice uh, quickly. It's, it's a, um, I want to make a comment on that. The uh, one, one thing I've, I've noticed about astronomers, they're, they're really into the science part of it. OK, they're they're into discovering the universe via science and a scientific method. And this might be kind of technical, but it's one thing I will present to an astronomer. How is it that when you focus on one star, all the rest of the stars are in focus? OK, that doesn't make sense because depth of field is definitely going to come into view. Now, an astronomer is going to know those terms. So, so if stars are trillions of miles away, there is no way you can focus on one star and all the rest of them are in focus. That means all the stars are on one plane, one single plane, okay? That's not possible because they're trillions of miles away. So that's gonna cause some feedback in their brain when you, when you ask them that question. And again, that's going to work with, with astronomers who are really into how light works and depth of field and, and how to focus on one object opposed to another. But when you ask them that, it's, it's really going to screw with their head and, and yeah. cause them to ask questions they would not have asked before. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. And I, I've looked into the depth of field and, you know, zooming in and uh, focal, focal points on stars. So, yeah, it's a great point. Any one of these things, you know, again, just crack that foundation, even from someone that's a hardcore scientist. If you get them on one thing, they start kind of going on their journey and you just kind of go that way and you can get them resources or wherever there are. If they're a Christian, you know, go from a biblical point of view. If they're, you know, skeptical, you know, because I, I mean, I was, here's the story real quick. I'm flying on a plane, you know, one of, one of my flights shooting Scientism Exposed 2. I get talking to a guy and he's a scientist. He was a chemist. And he, you know, we we're just talking away because I brought up scientism, right? He's, oh, I'm actually a chemist. I work here and I do these things. He actually uh, did, uh, what was it again, uh, for breathalyzers and, and the technology behind that where they can detect, uh, you know, alcohol in uh, different levels. Anyways, he started getting very skeptical in his own field about certain things that were going on in his industry. And that opened up the discussion. But as we got talking, we started just talking about the moon again and uh, NASA and, 
yeah, he started kind of going, yeah, that's kind of fishy. I don't know if I believe that or not. So it was an opening. So again, I, I've uh, approached uh, scientists and stuff. People are people, whether it's their profession or not, you know, from a personal point of view, people all have their opinions. Again, it's suspicious, man. They haven't been back to the moon. It's been almost 50 years. I mean, they never have been to the moon, but most people are starting to wake up and they better fake it again real soon because a lot of people are starting to question the fact that, you know, China hasn't been there. Russia hasn't been there. There's no, you know, woman up there. And what are they waiting for? And the idea that they got there with technology that had more, less megahertz power in their computing, you know, system than an iPhone 3. And we're led to believe that, you know, they got to the moon and back, you know, in a piece of junk. You know, this is what we're dealing with. But again, the level of deception is so grand that you can throw a car in space, show nonsense like that, and, you know, the world just claps and applauds it. So we are dealing with a very, very serious spiritual deception, indoctrination, because when people are applauding and saying that car floating in space right now is real, we've got we've got work cut out for us, right? We're not looking at just some little topic on the table. This is seriously entrenched indoctrination from an early age. And, and our goal, our, our goal is not to convince people. Our goal is to crack that veneer that, that, that has been, that they have been encased in since they've been a child. So, so we, we can't afford to get frustrated. And I think one of the reasons why people get frustrated is because they're trying to convince them. They're trying to turn them as it were. And that is not our job. Our job is to simply give them cause to doubt, to doubt what they've been taught all their lives, to doubt what doesn't make sense in the first place. And, and if we do that, we have done our job. We win. OK, so so my advice to people is just give them a reason to ask questions. Do not try to convince them. So I'm curious, Michael, uh, you know, based on your science background, maybe you can just briefly explain, you know, your kind of journey. I'm not sure if you went into this before you're planning to, but maybe just really briefly, if uh, you and Chris can just kind of explain, you know, briefly kind of your journey into this topic. I mean, you're obviously now doing a show together and now you see TV on it. So, you know, it's actually accelerated pretty quickly for you. Um, well, my 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 journey is is simple. I was brought up in the Lord. My mother trained my brothers and sisters and I um, into Christianity as a discipline, not as a mere religion. And so I was really brought up in how to trust him and to believe in him. Um, as, as I grew into, into the sciences, I started out as a science major, um, but I ended up as an art major. And then that kind of merged into the 3D animation and photography and illustration. So that's what I do for a living now. Um, but I've always been a Christian. I've always uh, trusted in, in the Lord, but I have not always believed that in the true cosmology. I knew that evolution was a crock. I knew that um, the Big Bang was just sheer foolishness. Although I discovered that in my school, they were willing to give me a high grade if I regurgitated this stuff. So I said, wow, seriously? Okay, great. I can use all the gay A's I could get. Um, but once I learned the once I learned the truth, of course, I saw a Mark Sargent video. And and then after I saw that, I said, no way. So now I broke open the scriptures and I read it. I believed it immediately because so it was Mark Sargent for you. That was your first video. That was my gateway, yeah. Cool. <laughs> right, cool. right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So so I, I I started from there and I just went wackadoo at that point. I was physically sick for three days um, because I was the, the, the original space cadet. Um, Stargate, Star Wars, Star Trek, that was it. I was there. And once I learned about the enclosed cosmology, I instantly knew space didn't exist. Yeah. It, it does not exist. It's a big, um, it's a big thing to deal with, eh? When you like, I, I don't know if I was more surprised with the Earth is not a globe or space doesn't exist. Right, like, right. That right. blew my mind. I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> right. I got, I got the chills. I got the chills when I'm like, space is fake. There is no space, right? Yeah. Right, right. Cool. I mean, that 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 was depressing. That was truly depressing. Okay. But once I got past that, then I started learning about the truth of God's creation, which was far more fascinating, and. Uh, and so now I'm just trying to use my skills to to show as many people as possible. And I have a lot of friends that are in the science. My son is an engineer, 
And uh, I haven't told him yet. I'm working on it. Um, so <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Cool, cool. What about you, Chris? <laughs> well, well, they, he does now know Michael, so yeah, he's yeah. all your stuff. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, our story is um, is it's quite interesting as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, you know, we were grown. You know, me and my wife. You know, we grew up in Christian homes, and you know, pretty standard. Uh, you know, you know, did all those types of things, but the we had a high school that we where we actually met with, uh, from. So we were high school sweethearts. I was the uh, basketball player. She was the cheerleader. Um, so we met at a Christian high school. And our, our realm into this was that our science teacher, so in the, our last show, we talked about uh, the rise of modern geocentrism. And we showed something what I called the Cleveland Connection and how it, it spawned off from professors from Case Western Reserve, which led to Baldwin Wallace, which was the same professor, which, you know, they were all rooted even in Cleveland State. And so it was really rich in this area amongst, you know, we didn't know any of this stuff. But the high school that we attended, our science teacher knew all these things. And this was in the mid-90s. And... Uh, that he taught from not only from a biblical perspective, but a scientific perspective, geocentricity. So we, we've we known this aspect for such a long time. And I didn't always go to that school that taught that. And he, and he was a high school teacher, so it wasn't taught in every science program at the school. So it wasn't really till you got to the high school and he showed, you know, scientific evidence, biblical proof, and all of those things. Uh, you know, that it became, hey, this is something viable. This is something true. And, I, you know, I went to other schools before that, and I came to this, and I, I you know, I did all the standard, uh, you know, science projects, all those things on the solar systems. And, you know, you come to this, this school, and all of a sudden you're being told that you're the center of the universe, the earth doesn't move, and we can back it up biblically and this, and you know, like Michael said, well, hey, I got to learn this so that I could get a passing grade. <laughs> you know, um, he was doing it on the flip side. I was doing it on this new realm that I had no known nothing about. And, you know, as I mentioned in our previous episode, you know, he was uh, a very instrumental high school student for so many of the kids just because of how, you know, great of a man he was, you know, not, you know, from a biblical standpoint and just caring for one another that, his stance on biblical cosmology stuck with me for a long time as, you know, hey, this is truth. I even remember, um, you know, other schools uh, and specifically youth groups, you know, from the kids that were at the school would go and tell their youth pastor or something and they would want to come and debate them. And that actually did happen uh, while I was in school there. And so, you know, this was this was something that was taking place in the 1990s. You know, these discussions on cosmology, heliocentric versus geocentric. Um, you know, nowadays it's all over the Internet. But back then it was happening one on one in classrooms. And uh, so, you know, fast forward a few years. Um, you know, uh, me and Liz get married much, you know, it was actually seven years, but, uh, you fast forward all that time and that, you know, that, that cycle starts to happen, you know, um, looking at things like nine 11, those things start to come off and already having a geocentric background, uh, we stumbled upon, you know, we went from nine 11 and stumbled upon, uh, uh Rob Skiba's Nephilim videos. And we're like, wow, this is very interesting. And, you know, we didn't, you know, I didn't know much about Genesis 6. I didn't know much about the sons of God. However, if I, if I took the, you know, because my wife is meticulous in, in note keeping and she has all of the science teacher's notes, he actually talks about Genesis 6, the sons of God, the, you know, the Nephilim, the giants, those types of things right there in our science notes. So he was talking about this in high school. That didn't stick with me. 
wow. you know, but the cosmology stuck with me. And so when, when we came to see Rob Skiba's Archon Invasion video, um, something really clicked. Like, wow, this is, you know, you know, here we had all the 9-11 stuff. Now it's coming full biblical in, in the regards of cosmology in times, you know, changing from, you know, certain eschatology stances that we've had our whole lives to something much different. And it was such, you know, such an easy realm when everybody started this, you know, you know, seeing flat earth. And, you know, once you start studying all these things, you know, I was even hearing about it well before, you know, even, you know, everybody like Dubay and Mark Sargent, it was already in circles, very minor, you know, the Illuminati deck cards, those things were already there and people were talking about them, but it wasn't until, you know, Rob took that journey after hearing Mark Sargent on, uh, you know, Face Like the Sun with Gons, and that really set us on that journey, and, and it was easy to accept because we had already accepted geocentricity. So it was, it became comical, you know, right away once we started seeing the NASA, you know, fails and all these different things. But then it really became a true apologetic, just as we were before with, you know, defending and teaching, you know, against evolution, teaching against Big Bang cosmology, like we've always been doing in youth ministries. And it just became that next, you know, evolution, quote unquote, of, um, you know, apologetics for us. And uh, that was that's what we're, you know, if, if anything, we should always never be afraid to. Uh, be in defense of the the word of God. So that that was something, and that was you know that's led us down the paths of so many other you know deceptions, other lies of of that we've been told in regards of scripture, as my, most of the now you see TV crowd knows what I'm talking about. So yeah, that that began that uh, that journey for sure. Awesome, yeah. No, I'm always excited to uh, to hear everyone's uh, intro. And uh, what was what so it was Rob Skiba would be your first kind of uh, video? Well, well, yeah, Rob? well, Rob's seeking, you know, and then obviously <laughs> then it led us down that path. The same time yeah. that you know he said, "I'm just looking into this, guys." I, you know, yeah. I'm that zetetic, uh, you know, agnostic. agnostic you know that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it led us right down to. Um, you know, Mark Sargent, it led us down, you know, a lot of other videos. Tiger Dan, um, <laughs> you know, wasn't very technical at the time. It was just very, you know, silly fun, but it, it did get you to think. And obviously there's there's something going on with why we don't see him now, I believe. But yeah. um, that, that, that was definitely one of the first ones as well, uh, Tiger Dan videos for sure. Yeah, yeah, good old Tiger Dan, eh? But uh, yeah, it, it, that's the amazing thing too, right? Is uh, I think Mark Sargent was my second video, but yeah, it was all part of the the journey. Just incredible how you just it, it just sparked, right? You just you watch those things, and it's like you were never the same after that. It's just so hard to explain sometimes for people, but it's like yeah, there's no feeling. There's no. Um, it's hard to comprehend exactly what what uh, happens when all of a sudden it just hits you. It's just like that moment when you're like whoa it's just so heavy it's just like you know you go through all these all right. different emotions but yeah it's it's so exciting like i said i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, pass this up for anything i mean it's been rough i mean there's been struggles uh but like i said it's such a amazing opportunity um again i can't really see anything else like i said bringing so many people to the true creator of creation bringing people to the Bible, um, just the whole truth for community. You know, people don't wake up to the lies of 9-11 and say, I want to go see what the King James Bible has to say about 9-11. <laughs> you know? But when it comes to this topic about the NASA lying about the moon landing and they lied to us about the world, it's like, I, I got to get a Bible. I got to get a Bible. They just run to the Bible. And I just like, that to me is so extraordinary. I mean, in my in my walk as a Christian for 20 years, I've seen a lot of things, but I've never seen something on a scale like this and in an intensity to drive people to like rush out and buy a Bible or just start devouring, you know, Rob Skiba videos or my videos. I mean, I know people that have approached me, you know, that are prominent figures that just continually listen to, you know, my videos and stuff. And they might not be there yet, but something's drawn them because they're like, falling asleep every night listening to you know biblical stuff so whether they're not vocal about it they're not there maybe they're embarrassed and stuff things are happening there's so many stories you know i get even stuff that's happening that i just know that 
everyone in their own, you know, it's going to happen in their time. But I'll tell you, it's it's affecting so many people and they're just being drawn to the reality of there can only be one. If there's only one true creation, if there's only one true reality of the enclosed world, then there only can be one true creator. There can't be like, you know, like I, I, we were joking out before when I said you can't just believe anything and it's true. So you can reason with the truther. And I think that's where we have an extraordinary opportunity to reason and say what book has more compelling evidence to support every aspect of our creation than the Bible. Try to figure it out. You can't. There's nothing. There's nothing. Buddhism doesn't have it. You know, Islam doesn't have it. You know, they'll say that, you know, there's some flat earth verses in, in the Quran and we're not getting into, you know, a religious discussion. But what I'm saying is you might have a couple. The Bible is just full of it, you know. So what I'm saying is what authority do you have? Whatever you're going to decide to believe as far as who your creator is, what are you basing it on? What's your authority? Is it just you concocting a creator and saying, my creator, you know, that's idolatry. That's making a God in your own image when you just decide side my god does this and this and that what i'm saying is it's important for truthers to understand it's like really makes sense that you would be able to stand on authority it's like what what body of work what what you know just having a brand new and that's what i find fascinating about this whole uh discussion is so many people are waking up to the reality of a creator and while it's hard for them you know for many of them to come to the true creator they're still wrestling with it but it's like how do you wake up in the morning knowing there's a creator and not desiring just being hungry and saying i want to know everything i mean there has to be a way i mean even screaming out and saying will you talk to me you know you would think that but yet there's still that numbness going on and i, I explain it that way is there's still something there that you know while they want to do these experiments they want to run around wouldn't you want to know anything and everything to do with the true creator you know if there is a creator that puts you here and you come to that knowledge but there's not and a lot of people are kind of just you know they'll be you know interested it's another you know interest i'll, I'll watch a video i'll read a couple of things in the bible but i'm really fascinated on exactly the shape and the model and the and that's all good it all comes into the puzzle piece but what i find is that's where we come into the picture it's like we have to ignite that fire and people going, man, be hungry, be hungry, because all those that search him are going to find him 100 percent, you know, and and it's like you got to get that hunger. And I'm just surprised that there's some people that are just, yeah, they're hiding God. Yeah, there's a creator. But why would you be hungry? I mean, do you think that if, if a loving creator created us, they wouldn't want to put something in place to know them? You know, wouldn't they want to put something in place that you could understand what pleases them, what doesn't please them? You know, these things are just, you know, it, like things that make sense to a person. And that's getting into apologetics. This is getting into witnessing. But this is where we have to look at a whole new opportunity. There is tens of thousands of people that are waking up to the truth about the lies of NASA, the lies of scientism. We have to be ready for them on all different fronts, having different resources, different ways to approach it. we got to be smart about it. Uh, we don't have to water things down. We don't have to be different. But that's why every person is important. Every person listening, every person that's out there, we're all different. We come to it with different skill sets. We come to it differently. So God has us there to basically be there based on where we're at to reach that audience. You know what I mean? And I explain that all the time. I say that when it comes to like, when it comes to like Torah, if you're in there, you're, you're reaching that Torah community. There's lots of infighting. There's lots of brutal stuff going on there. Maybe that's your task. Maybe I'm out there to reach these type of churches. But again, we're all in this and exposing the lies and it's all part of our journey. But if we recognize that we're brothers together, we're unified and we kind of come down from that ladder of going, you don't believe this, you must be a pagan or a heathen. Or if we re relax on that, we're going to have so much more opportunity. I mean, I've been mm -hmm. around situations where I've been able to like uh, the conference last year uh, in Texas, when I was able to meet John Pounders, we would talk after the conference to like two, three in the morning. We would talk about so many topics. And I said this the other day to Rob Skiba, I said, listen, get two Christians in a room. And if you leave them there long enough to talk about topics, you'll end up arguing and differing on something. And if you choose to focus on the things you differ, eventually it will get heated. Eventually it will probably break up your friendship. And eventually, you know, so what I'm saying is we need to be smart about the fact of going, look, we're all going to have our differences. Are we going to rise them so high to actually destroy what's going on? And I think that's Satan's number one play. His number one play when it comes to the church or Christians or when it comes to this revelation is like get them focusing on the differences. They will not have power if they're doing it alone. But if they stand together in unity and team up, man, it's, you know, and that's and that's what I'm saying is so important because I see so many brothers and sisters, you know, we're all unified in this. We all believe in the true creator of, creators, of creation and yet we'll, we'll choose something 
like it could be anything it could be the name it could be the names it could be the days it could be like this and while they're important and it's all part of this don't get me wrong um you know there is that approach where we have to look at it and say but are we unified are we going to go so far go so far as to say i don't think that person's the brother i said that to rob the other day i said you know what as long as we go you know what that's still a brother i'm going to pray for him <laughs> i'm concerned about him hopefully he'll come to this someday right. and maybe he will but if we take that approach that's the approach we need to do. But the minute we start kind of getting pharmaceutical and we start getting, you know, looking or uh, putting our noise down, go, I don't know. I, I'm not going to watch anything of that person because they don't believe this or they don't say the name, you know, uh, of uh, Yeshua correctly. I mean, people are fighting <laughs> about even Yeshua, you know, or Yahweh. Oh, no, you don't say it that way. You say it that way. I'm like, whoa, whoa, guys, come on. We have a whole lost world out there. There is like God's rising us up. You know, there's a big lost world out there. Let's pick our battles, right? And let's pray for those people that we're concerned about, or you know, I'm concerned about my 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 brothers that are already still you know believing in heliocentrism. I know there's brothers out there that are praying with me because they're really worried that I haven't fully come over to the true name, you know, of Yahweh or Yeshua or whatever. But again, I'm kind of like Rob Skiba, where he's just like he prefers to say Yeshua, but he also says Jesus. Let's let's you know, for me, and this is just for me. I'm just saying, I, I've been called to be a peacemaker. And I'm saying there's validity to all these arguments. Don't get me wrong. I think there's a big deal when it comes to the pagan holidays. I think it's a big deal when it comes to the names. You know, this is a big deal. Truth is important. But we need to basically look at it and say, okay, we have all these things. Let's let's see which one should we rise to the top and which one should we know that we can like differ. We can have good engaging discussions, but we can still be brothers. We don't have to agree with everything, but we're not going to fight and we're not going to destroy our ministries and we're going to destroy our unity. And that's exactly when Lucifer just laughs and he says another one bites the dust because that's exactly what happens when we kind of join together on these big, big issues, uh, even with our differences we really start changing a lot of people and God will use us in a mighty way. I really believe that. So that's been my journey. I'm so glad that I listen uh, to his leaning because there was an early on where I could have really taken an approach and gone really hard on like, no, it's this name. You guys are wrong. And you know what I mean? And I chose to basically, it wasn't even me that chose it. It was him like, settle down, you know, just look at the situation, rely on me, and things will happen. And I mean, I wouldn't have had the friendships with John Pounders or Rob Skeeber or whatever, even though there were certain issues where I got a little passionate going, whoa, there might be going a little far in my mind. But he's like, relax. Is it salvational? I'm like, well, no, it's not. They're still my brother. Okay, focus, right? You guys have all the tasks to do. You guys are all going this way, exposing the greatest lie that Lucifer's ever be able to penetrate on the earth. And you guys are going to focus on my name, you know, and this, that, thing. I think it's like focus on these are important and you can have opportunities to talk and discuss and engage with each other because honestly, Lord's working on me with the Sabbath. Lord's working on me with these things, but I'm not hundred percent going to say that anyone that's, you know, going to church on Sunday. I mean, I'm not even going to associate with, you know what I mean? They're still my brother, you know, these type of things, but this is important. I see the value in that. And I've had these engaging discussions and it's been a good approach because if someone had basically beat me over the head and said, you're a pagan heathen, you know, I'm not going to listen to a word you say because you don't, you go to church on Sunday. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm witnessing, I have an opportunity and I have a whole story even with my, my church journey. But again, I also look at it like, whoa, wait a minute. Just like, just kind of like the Jews, I'm going to be careful before I start saying bad things about Jews. In the same breath, I'm going to be very careful the way I talk about the church. How does God view it? You know, and again, his bride, it's an important topic. And I'm just like, just before I start bashing all churches, yeah, churches have big problems. There's a lot of issues. But again, for whatever reason, I've been called to go in there and look at it in a different, you know, way. And hopefully, you know, that's what you had mentioned this before in the program is how do we deal with the churches? How we don't run away from them. Some people are going to be called to go into them. It's like, you know, people say, no, you need to be out of them. They're all evil. No, we need to We need to have people that are in there because we have to affect change in there. Do you understand that if just the church, just the church woke up to this one lie, do you understand how big of a reformation that would be? It would be like something you would never seen. So rather than coming away from them and just ignoring them, we need to work in there. We need to work with Answers in Genesis. We need to engage mm -hmm. with the church. We need to have certain people in the church. And even though they're frustrated, they're not teaching in closed cosmology, be there. Do the patient. See what God has in store for you. And maybe he'll call you out when you're chose to call out. So for me, I look at things a little bit bigger and I have my journey and I'm willing to be open and look at things. I know what's right from wrong, but I also know what's salvational. These are these are incredibly important ones. These are also 
you know, secondary issues where I really don't have to start, you know, beating my brother over the head and call him, you know, the Antichrist because he doesn't believe it or, or a heliocentric pagan sun worshiper. You know, the worst thing is, is I remember, I remember one guy came to me and he's just like, yeah, I kind of started looking into it. And, uh, you know, I felt kind of bad that uh, really, if I don't believe in this, I'm basically a pagan sun worshiper. I'm like, so someone had put out a video and this person basically thought that, that all the flat earthers saw that anyone that would believe in heliocentrism they're pagan sun worshipers. And I'm like, there is, a, there is a significance with the sun, which I find interesting. And it's there for sure. There's that all helio. There's, you know, the Greeks, the Romans. But whoa, let's be careful before we start looking at our brother or anyone for that matter and saying, you're a sun worshiper. This is a deception. This is something so grand that people don't even recognize what they're doing. They're just falling along. But I guarantee you they're not going, hmm, today I'm going to go outside and I'm going to join the sun by worshiping it and praying to it. No, people just don't think like that. But again, just because they believe in the system, the world's been presented. Let's be a little easier on them. We've got work to do. We've been called. We're on the forefront. We need our brothers and sisters on this, you know, so let's try our best with the infighting and stuff, especially the unity that uh, I see. And, and I have, you know, it was getting nasty there for a while, but I've noticed it getting better and better. And I've, I've had discussions, mm -hmm. I've seen it and it is getting better. And it was like, I'm so glad that I just kind of went that course because I probably would have got myself in a whole mess and I probably wouldn't be where I am because <laughs> I would have probably, if I had basically got all passionate and adamant because that's my personality. And the one thing with this topic has taught me is look, you can be a little bit more tolerant. If someone's going to be tolerant, you believe in flat earth, maybe you can be a little <laughs> bit tolerant. And it's been good. It's opened up discussions in churches and everything. Cause I'm like, okay, they believe this and this and this, they're not quite there yet, or they don't believe in this. I'm like, so if I'm at a church and they believe in flat earth, hundred percent, but they differ on one thing, should I leave that church? I'm like, that's a win. If you ask me, I mean, right. so it's allowed me to settle down and going, here's my brother that believes in the deception of this whole, you know, Big Bang, heliocentric, the monster lie of all, I'm not going to start parting ways just because I don't believe what they believe with the name. You know, I'm going to embrace them. I'm going to learn from them. I'm not, you know, so it's, it's, it's before personality wise, I would have stood my ground. I would have been like, nope, doctrinally, I'm taking you down. Ding, ding, ding. Any doctrinal issue, if I stand on it, I'm going to debate you right to the end. And if anything, I'll probably get real heated and passionate and I probably won't associate with you because how could I associate with you? You know, how could you not see the truth? You know, I'd be ignorant. I'd be a little bit arrogant. This has taught me to be a little bit more mercy motivated, more loving. It's weird because it's not my personality at all. So God's going <laughs> to put me in my place. He said, look, you went that long and you couldn't even read the scripture correct. Now you're going to listen to me, you know? So in a way he kind of really chastised me. And I mean, I remember crying. And I remember repenting and say, Lord, you know, you know, forgive me for not, you know, believing in your word, you know, believing in science and NASA and lies and all this sort of thing. And, you know, holding on to this when I could have just read it. So thank you so much for waking me up. I mean, all credit to him. I gave him full credit. But I'm like, I don't know why I woke up to this, but I did. And I give all credit and all glory to him because it's he's the only reason that I'm here right now and uh, doing this interview or doing the work that's, that's being done. So it's, it's, it's awesome. I'm excited. I can't wait for the conference at Take on the World. I can't wait for you guys hopefully to come out to, to the Flat Earth International Conference 2018. Because like I said, I mean, uh, the Bible is going to be preached. The you know gospel is going to be shared. Many people's lives are going to be changed uh, as they are all, all over. And I'm just excited to, to be part of the journey and, and have you guys along. So this has been an awesome, you know, when Jake told me that I was doing it with Chris um, and Michael, I was excited because this is the first time we've been able to actually see each other, you know, go a little bit more in depth. I talked to Chris Chris on the phone getting into the conference and I, I'm really humbled and I, I thank you very much for, you know, um, having me come down to be part of it. I'd, I'd seen what was going on last year, um, you know, with the conference. So I really appreciate the opportunity and I'm excited to get to know you guys better because like I said, we're, we're in this together. This one, like I said, is a big topic. Scientism, you know, is Satanism with a veneer of dignity and lab coats, you know, instead of the robes, you know, they just put on the lab coats. And I say that, I say, this is a serious topic and we could talk on different levels, but really we're dealing with a very sophisticated satanic lie that's deceived, you know, the whole world. I'm saying the world is in the world's wisdom. You know, it really has. So we have the opportunity, you know, to shed that light. We're, 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 we're called to be that light, to be the salt. Let's do it. Um, because again, the world literally is going to change. Yeah, this is awesome. Hey, well, thank you so much, Ravi, for coming tonight. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, let people know where we can go again to see Scientism Exposed 2 and where they can learn more about you and learn about the conference. 
Sure. Okay. Well, if you go to um, Celebrate Truth, so it's just the two words, CelebrateTruth.org. That's the main website. You'll find uh, Scientism Exposed to. You'll, si you'll find the digital download, the rental, DVD, all the different information. Uh, my information is there as well. If you go to YouTube, just type in Celebrate Truth. Or if you actually just go to YouTube, I think you could just type in my name now. It will come up. But uh, Celebrate Truth on YouTube. I've got uh, over 10 documentaries there. Uh, Scientism Exposed, the first one. It's there. You can watch it. Um, and um, yeah, check it out. Uh, subscribe. You know, definitely love to, to hear from you. If you uh, love the interview, definitely, you know, post in the comments. I'll be posting the comments after this uh, uh, live stream is done. I really appreciate all your support. I see a lot of you, you know, in the chat and uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful for Now You See TV and just everything that you guys are doing. Um, and uh, I'm excited about your show that you're going to be doing as well. Uh, with the uh, conference, uh, you can go to fe2018.com. Check it out. Amazing. Rob Skiba is going to be there. You know, I'll be there. Zen Garcia is going to be there. We got Mark Sargent, Patricia Steer. We've got uh, Jaron. We've got Bob Nodell. We've got uh, D Marble. Um, we got Flat Earth Man coming in from Spain. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Flat Earth Man. He does all the music videos. Great yeah, stuff. Him. He's excited. He's coming in as well. So really exciting. Got Nathan Thompson. We've got so many. And there's more uh, that we're going to be announcing. And we got some other things in the works right now that we're going to be announcing soon um, for possibly another country. And I think that's going to be absolutely incredibly exciting so yeah check me out um on facebook if you're on facebook you know uh, follow me there add me um robbie davidson but yeah celebrate truth you can see all my stuff subscribe check it out love to hear from you and i really uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to be here tonight thank you so thank you so much uh michael do you have any words um last words that you would like to say tonight well uh robbie this was a great interview it was fine it was great to finally get a chance to meet you and uh and uh looking forward to the conference and um uh, and the rest of the stuff you're going to be putting out yeah i guess next time we'll actually be uh, seeing each other is take on the world we'll actually that's the first time we'll be able to actually meet in person so i'm that's excited true. about that i'm that's always true. excited i'm always excited about meeting people in person because it just it's just the bond just intensifies after that and i think it will be i guess you guys already know that i'm tall so i don't really have to say it right. that's one thing about the conference i had so many people coming up to me and going whoa i never knew you were so tall <laughs> they're like i never knew you were so tall and i said that's the point if you never came out here you would have never known me you would have never known me and that's my point. I can sit in a chair, I can talk, but no one will truly know me unless they meet me. And that's what's so important about meeting each other, getting out, come to the conference, take on the world if you guys can. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm totally looking forward to it. I mean, Rob Skeeb is going to be there and so many great speakers. You guys, you know, have to come out. Uh, I'll be there in August. What is it, 24th, 25th, I believe, Chris? It, it's uh, the 24th through the 26th. So it's a full three days. Uh, so we're going to have so so much stuff going on. Think of it, um, you know, less like a conference. It's going to be really more like a retreat. So, yeah. you know, it is going to be fully, you know, fellowship. Everybody's staying on the camp grounds itself. Um, the cottages are almost sold out. So if you want to get a cottage, your own little place there, we only have, I believe, two left on the cottages. Uh, we still have the, the lodge still available and tons of other uh, places to stay from camping to RVs. Uh, we still have those available. So there's tons of uh, space for the camp. Um, and uh, if you if you haven't subscribed to the email, it is, it's right there at takeontheworld18.com. You can go right there, subscribe to the emails that put you right in that list that gets you all the updates. And yeah, it's, it's going to be great. So it, yeah, it is truly excited. a retreat. So yeah, I'm really excited. Like I said, talking to Jared uh, Cressman, the the new speaker you announced uh, a few days ago, it's going to be really exciting. We we got to meet briefly, obviously, but I was, you know, obviously doing the documentary, so you know, I was obviously in that mode. So I didn't really have a ton of time. We did go out to dinner with Joe Taylor and uh, Jared afterwards, but it would be nice to have you know a few days to really get to know each other more. And uh, he does amazing work on Through the Black. Uh, I actually just did an interview with him about two weeks ago. I actually just put it up on my channel. So if you go to Celebrate Truth, you can actually check out 
with that interview with Jared. Uh, yeah, check out his stuff on Through the Black. It's really, really great. And everyone, support everyone. Obviously, that's in the documentary. If anyone hasn't heard of someone, check them out. Honestly, Joe Taylor, check out his stuff. I mean, absolutely fascinating. The guy's brilliant. Like, I'd love to just go and pick Joe's brain. He is going to be coming out again to Denver. Uh, and you can learn so much from Joe and he's learning and yeah, he's, he's starting to track more and more with this. And then Aaron Jenkins as well. Uh, really, really amazing stuff that he's doing, really exposing the, the lies of scientism when dinosaurs and evolution and the flood and all these sort of things. And then having all these people come together, you know, we're powerful. And that was my point is if we unify, we can do projects, we can do things together, bringing our skill sets. And this is exactly what I believe, you know, is supposed to happen and you know satan is going to try to thwart this at every angle try to get us to divide over issues doctrine all that garbage and i just say to people all the time hey if anything just for the next five years let's put our differences kind of aside let's all focus on what we unify with you know which are the main things but also flat earth if you've been called and this is passionate to do stuff in this topic then you know put put aside those little differences for now see what can be accomplished in the next five years because i think huge things are going to be accomplished for sure